back, everyone. <laughs> We're back. So, so that was fun. So I don't want you. You know what? I'm just gonna end this this one. I'm not gonna try to live stream on this other one. We're done. I'm in. Okay. Uh. Sorry. Because then it, it it actually while I was trying to switch things over, it then switched to a different video. So I'd have to go back and like, nah, you're done. You're over. But yeah. we're recording on YouTube and Ups. we're on uh, the Liberty Principal Facebook page. Now, what we were talking about was when you go to school, they teach you the, the, the basic mechanics of a republic. They don't really teach you the definitions. And they use the term republic and democracy interchangeably. And Donnie was saying, Donnie Gebert. Gebert, 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 Gebert. We don't yeah. want to say Gebert, right? <laughs> you don't want to say Gebert. Come yeah. on, hey Bert, hey Bert. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want that. So you were saying that when when it's a social cause, it's a democracy, and when right. they don't want you to act on a social cause, it's a republic. So. Right. That's like the whole, the, the whole thing. See, like a lot of the language seems to be very emotionally manipulative, and you have to really like if you're you know, even a minor believer in the system, the the emotional language works really well. <clears throat> so never mind how somebody's trying to sell it to you. I just I was trying to figure out the terms. So I think direct is when you pretty, were young. You tried to figure out the terms. Well, I, I, to believe it or not, I did. When I saw this in my civics book like 25, 30 years ago, I actually thought, well, where's the other – like like I th I saw stuff missing, but I didn't think anything of it because I was like 14 and I didn't care. So – but but in my – just thinking about this, you know, direct democracy, nobody mistakes that. Everybody understands what a direct democracy is. I don't direct think that's true. Direct it. Well, I don't think everybody I, understands I, I the effects. I think that anyone who – I'll say this. A, a much wider group of people understand what direct democracy means. But but that that there's a, that's, a, that's still a small group because most people, they don't they, – they, they're, not, they're not very politically sophisticated, I'll just say. So even for them. Very, very few people understand the effects and the negative effects of a direct democracy. They some people, most people know it's kind of a shit show, but they couldn't articulate why those negative effects exist in a direct democracy. My point is nobody confuses it. Everybody knows direct democracy is you and your vote and the and the winner winner take all. Yeah, there's not. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. So then you're told that a constitutional republic is you get a constitution that disintermediates all of the shit show that is democracy, and it makes sure that the, that the direct democracy doesn't blow back and come and get you. And, and, but it doesn't have anything to do real like, – so I don't know the difference, right? Is it the constitutional part that prevents direct democracy from blowing up my face, or is it the republic? And what are those things? Well, the word constitutional just means – that which is contained in your constitution. North Korea has a constitution. China has a constitution. Right. It doesn't matter. You know, it's the generally – The republic of what the fuck is Stan has or – it doesn't matter. But generally – Whatever they write in there would be de facto constitutional. But it's, it's generally kind of recognized and, – and I'm going to say I'm describing the ideal, not what actually happens. But in the <laughs> ideal – a constitutional form of government is a government that ha that is bounded by certain uh, rules. You know, this no. is the rule of law. No, no, no. You're you're putting a value judgment on top. No, of the no. I'm I'm and I'm you're not... saying it has to make sense. Remember? No, 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 no. I'm I'm not putting a value judgment on it. I'm recognizing the way others describe it. And again, I okay. did open with right. a caveat. Right. This you're right. Is the they, ideal they that they're describing. It. I'm absolutely. not saying that's what happens at okay. all. I, oh, oh, I agree. They okay. absolutely describe it with a value judgment. And that's really a problem because values and schematics don't go together. You can build a clock with a schematic. You cannot build a clock with your values. And, and, and the values is where you and I could have a Venn diagram, whereas the mechanics are where we are going to grind that Venn diagram down to nothing. That's what the mechanics do. If you disagree with the law, you get ground down to a nub. So you got to make sure that the law is intelligently constructed. And I would just say it's been constructed by lawyers. 
So if anybody thinks it's been intelligently constructed, you're wrong, and I'll happily debate you anywhere, anytime, any person. This the, the law was constructed by lawyers. Uh, you could say it was politicians, but essentially, it They're was one either in the same, pretty much. Uh, yeah, it, and most of the honestly, it's not even the politicians now because a lot of the lawyers that work for the lobbyists are the ones who actually write the laws, and then they just get them submitted to the to the politician slash lawyer friend. Who's going to get it, you know, submitted to all of Congress and then they're going to vote on it 48 hours later, even though it's 1200 pages long. Right. So if if everyone thinks maybe this is a good process for you and I to make law, I think that's a great process for you to do it. By that, I mean, it's fucking dumb. <laughs> and I'm going to go do it. And you be dumb. Way. Just keep your dumbs off of me, man. But exactly. Keep your dumbs off of me. So. That's a T-shirt. I want that T-shirt. Keep your dumbs off of me. So, so basically, the Constitution is whatever people put in it. It's a bouillon base of whatever stupid people can come up with. Now, our the federal Constitution. It, it's not bad, circa seventeen ninety one, except uh, a three fifths compromise. Basically, means it was sixty percent broken the minute they wrote it. And then they started throwing in other mechanics that don't change over time. So I'm just going to say it was half good. It was a good try, 1791, okay. I but don't it think it was a good out. try. I think it was designed to do pretty much what it did, which was it created uh, it oh. created the groundwork for the central authority to assume more power if and when it could and it and it and it and it did what language is more than capable of doing. It 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 created giant loopholes well in advance. I, to take I advantage think, of when the time came. I don't think that was done on purpose because the people who wrote that document have no fundamental understanding of the world we live in. So to say that they wrote it so that it would always give someone purchase to screw with them over time. I mean, Thomas Jefferson wrote no, it. No, no, they they intended rewrite. on they intended no. on moving on Je it like pretty quickly. Jefferson, <laughs> Jefferson said rewrite it in twenty years. So even if you think that this was supposed to last this long, the guy who wrote it didn't. So I don't foresee anybody involved in this process thinking it was supposed to last this long. And no, no they do don't necessarily do. have to believe that for my statement to be true. Be, but I'm not saying that they're thinking like decades and centuries down the road. I'm thinking they, they're they're. I mean, how did the Constitution come into being? The Constitution came I'm into being. They had the Articles of Confederation. And the states, they immediately began to tax and burden people out the giggy. And, and the I'm... people rebelled. Now, hold on. Let me let me figure, finish this thought. Okay. The people rebelled. And the states were dealing with these troublesome, meddlesome people. And the states wanted a central authority to come in and help them deal with this this meddlesome crap. And that's 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 where the Constitution comes into being. The Constitution wasn't intended to protect your freedoms. It was intended to create a central authority that could protect the freedoms of the owners and managers of the states. It was intended to create a central authority. I'll agree with that. It wasn't intended to be in everybody's life. And remember, if the guy who wrote it said... They wouldn't have even thought of it being in everybody's life at he, that time. Exactly. He, he, here's the one thing they had then. The entire landscape was covered with expert humans, okay? Self-sufficient humans who didn't right. need help. They, they, Right. They all had their own farms. They didn't it, know it needed. It would be very difficult to coerce them, folks, because they're it's, outside exactly. of your entanglement, and they can easily say no to you. Exactly. So they created a central authority, and the first and, – and what they tried to do was restrain it, okay? I don't think they did a good job, and, and you're saying that was done intentionally, and I'm saying the guy who – the guy who wrote it said, "If it's fucked up, rewrite it in twenty years." Yeah, you know, I, I don't. Thomas see Jefferson this as a didn't huge... write it. James Madison probably. Uh, but what wrote I'm saying way is way more than Thomas, Je well, Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson didn't write any of it. Actually, I'm saying the zealots of two, 2018, the people, the constitutionalists of 2018, are way more into the Constitution than the people who wrote it. They they looked at it as if it had a shelf life. These people are looking at it as if it's glory and memoriam. And I'm saying, man, this was not written in a time when you and I would have even been able to. I can't. I can't say I. I can't say I agree that they wrote it 
with uh, a shelf life. I mean, even if even if Thomas Jefferson said, right, right, and in 20 years, he's one guy, he's not they, he's not all of them. But, and but and the Constitution, the it was written with, uh, with a mechanism to change it. So it was written that you could change it, but it was a pretty high bar, ostensibly a high bar to change it. Well, so they made it difficult to change it in the first place. Their model that they even cited, many of them, was the Spartan frickin' Constitution. Now, the, the Spartan Constitution, the, good luck changing what the, the, the Spartan, that was a problem the Spartans never did change, and they didn't adapt, and that's why right, they ended up dying. But. Right, but you're, you're way too close to the elephant. You're not understanding. What did they do for the change mechanisms of the Article of Confederation? They balled them up, and they threw them away. So if you don't like the way you can change the Constitution, the people who wrote it recognized that you had the ability – well, you, that you had the right, if not the ability, to go and write your own and go do your own thing. They recognized the ability for them to do it, and if you went and did it yourself, you but, might but, have a fight but, with them. But, but, but all the, the yeah. history of their legal debates don't show that. They're, I mean, they're, they're, it, it doesn't show that there was this belief that you know in 20 years we could just scrap the whole thing. I don't. I don't see the evidence for this other than isolated cases. I see them arguing over, uh, you know, secession, the right of secession. That was the big thing until the Civil War. Then after the Civil War, then people stopped talking about it. Why but were there they for a while? That was a big debate. Right secession. Why were they? Ar because at that time, but secession the is not jettisoning the whole thing. Secession is. I'm no longer going to participate in this union. I, I understand that. Why, why were they debating it? That's but, but the listen, track. hold on, hold on. Why, where I don't want us debate? to get too far afield here. No, no, we're in a good place. Okay. But where was All the right. debate? Because what we're debate? getting to is actually we're going to be talking about, just to, so you folks know who are watching who don't know, we are going to get to talking about Donnie's uh, direct republic on the blockchain. But anyway, go ahead. What, where was the debate that uh, in secession, right? Did the states have the right to secede or not? That was the debate. There, there were some that were saying that... that Why that, didn't they just do it? Here, Here's the question. Why didn't they just do it? Why didn't Why they just they do it? Because permission. they were looking for constitutional precedent. Okay. John what Marshall if, really you, did a lot of damage to help <laughs> cement the Constitution as something that you just don't jettison. He created... I. The, I can agree that you don't want to jettison your organizational structure as a society. You've got monetary problems. You want to be able to lend. Um, you want to be able to have access to capital you markets. Need all of these, yeah. Yes, every that, all those things make make things more stable. So nobody's trying to jet, right. nobody's trying to jettison your organizational model to, in, to say we're not going to have organization. The question is, is the machine going to run in this way? And they weren't so anal retentive about changing things. Remember, they wadded up the Articles of Confederation, tossed them, and they had no problems with rewriting if it was a problem. When it became a problem, instead of rewriting, they warred. Why? Why didn't they split instead of war? This is an intelligent time to split instead of war, but instead we didn't do it the right way. Um. The reason that they didn't split is because the union recognized that a split would cost them dearly economically and their personal power of the individuals, the owners and managers of said union. That's why. It was purely a necessity of the reality of power that and, compelled them to make sure the South didn't leave. And and there, I'd say there's about 15 really intelligent arguments that have really good crossroads across all of what you're saying. The point is, it doesn't matter. All of those fuckers are dead. All of them. Why does any of this matter to any of us? Because we, of the myth of rule of law. That's why. They, they lived in a time when information could travel as fast as a bullet and could travel as far as a horse could in a day. And we don't live in that world. If you can get information to go faster than a horse, does the way that their structure present ways to manipulate it, like attack surfaces to manipulate it? And we all know the answer is yes. We can sum it up in one word, lobbying. If you can get information to go faster than this old rickety system will allow, then it's always ahead of you. It's ahead at every choke point where a corruption uh, 
an, a corruption attack surface exists, the information is always way ahead of the system. Plenty of time. It's thousands of pages ahead of the system. So that a thousand pages will show up and everybody gets to vote on it tonight. That's how far ahead. So to continue to say that the Constitution is the way it's going to be done in the future, I'm going to look Wait, in the face. Am I you. saying Don't that? Listen. Am I saying huh? that? No, no. I, okay, I don't cause I, anybody. Like, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a now. Constitution guy. Oh, this is uh, and, not me. And I'm at the place where I'll say, bring me Dennis Prager, because he's the only guy who could even try to defend this all the way out. And it, we are going to get rid of the Constitution in our lifetimes, not because the philosophy is bad, but because the mechanics are bad. And it's and it's and that's all it boils down to. Remember, East and West Germany used to exist. And then one day it was Germany and a bunch of drunk guys beating on a wall with hammers. So to pretend that the republic is going to be reformed and we're all going to die and eat each other in the process, it's probably going to look like a bunch of drunk guys beating on a wall that we don't have yet. See, I, I think that the Constitution is is not going to last because of the reality of the situation that. The, the, the central system used to be able to offer you, whether, whether it was real or imagined, I don't, I'm not going to get into whether it was real or imagined, the central system, the central authority, offered you a, a service that you valued in exchange for your loss of freedom, in exchange for the, the, the cost that you were paying. And what's happening more and more is people are discovering, especially with emerging technologies, that you can do things far more efficiently without that central system there. And it's becoming increasingly more obvious that it's not offering a quality product. And it's yes. and it's and because of its ossification and and how bureaucratized it is, and then you add on top of that the the legacy uh, pensions that you now have to pay for people who are living longer and longer and longer who got these sweetheart pension deals. Suddenly you're paying more and more and getting less and less. That's what's going to kill the Constitution. Uh, yes. I, I'll, I'll, the only part I would say I would argue against that is that you said people are now starting to uh, – and now that now the system is starting to come unraveled. And I would say the only difference – I didn't say it was coming unraveled. I said well, that people are beginning to see, and, and I should qualify that it's still a small number, but it's growing every day. People are beginning to see that the, the products and services that the central authority is offering, even at the local level, is crappier and crappier and costlier and costlier. And, right. hey, I can do it with this freaking 3D printer right here now. I don't need you. Or, you know, what's yeah, happening exactly. is – is technology is starting to bring back self-sufficiency, self-reliance. And well, what did you talk about in the very beginning about the frontiersmen? Yeah, I, I think technology is just showing the system for how bad it's always been. Oh, I agree. That's, I agree. Uh, and that's why I, I qualified it with that whole yeah, okay. illusion it's, or reality. You know, it's, it's kind of more of, a, of, a, of the myth state that we're all taught when we're kids. And then we have to grow up and find out how all these things work. And then all of a sudden it's like, OK. The, the advertisement isn't the reality. What do you do with the reality? And a lot of people don't understand it. And, and I think they don't understand it because the terms were never even discussed intelligently. So the, anyway, okay, when you get down ahead. to democracy, when you get down to democracy, because of direct democracy, I use the word democracy as an equal sign with voting. Now, it's democracy is used to describe not just voting, but social agency. Now, so when the women got the right to vote, they gained their social agency because social agency was tied to the vote. And I'm saying that social agency shouldn't be tied to a vote. So it's not I'm saying take the vote away from anyone except everybody because voting creates a minority and persecutes them by the nature of that method of conflict resolution. If you have a problem and you don't want to create minorities and you don't want to persecute them, then you literally can't vote. Because the first thing you're going to do is is make a minority, and then they're stuck with the outcome. I do want to you... I want to say something about that direct democracies. They're not all alike, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, some direct democracies they operate more uh, in a consensual manner. So you don't show up, and you know the majority wins. Uh, they have uh, thresholds. They have uh, 
it's like a, a, a sometimes it's it's a like an overwhelming super majority or sometimes it's almost like a caucus system where you keep going through the process until you get actual consensus. So not all democ direct democracies are alike, but the the simpler direct democracies are holy terrors. But, but here's the problem. What Not you that I'm just advocating for any of them. Well, just listen, listen wait, but, but there's a functional problem there. You just described several different kinds of systems. Yes. But all of the, but all of the terms that were used pretty much lump them together. Oh, there's complex direct democracies and there's simple. Well, wait a minute. Well, where they, all, all, they, they, where they, did all that they all tend to use that term direct democracy no. to describe themselves. Right. Right. But what I'm saying is that can't be right. You can't have a direct democracy and then say, well, this one works this way and it has a bunch of bylaws to it. Because now what I'm hearing is, is my point. I'm hearing constitutional democracy. You have a democracy, but it has some kind of structure and bylaws that it, cause it, it, it has some threat. rule of law limitations applied to it, ostensibly. But, ostensibly. but right there, just the phrase direct democracy. Does anybody know what that encompasses? No, it doesn't. You described – so I would describe a direct democracy as you, your vote, 51-49 loser winner, and then all of those other types would be referred to as a constitutional democracy. They're going to have to have some kind of explanation of the bylaws of that democracy. It's not just this straight up thing. Yeah, you don't, you know, everybody, should we now have a stoplight here, yes or no? Well, hold on, you have to learn the process first. Right. It, well, <laughs> you it, can't just it, say right. yes if, or no, right? Like That's you said, if, you're, if your process is, okay, we're going to put all of the candidates up for a vote first, and then the top five get recycled, and then the top five get recycled to a top three, and then a top two, and then a top one, then it's not direct. You haven't done a direct democracy. Even though the people had the agency, there was no directness there unless the directness is you. Because the direct process got really roundabouted. And every roundabout, think about it like a battlefield. Think about it like a political battlefield. Every time a mechanic is installed, now you have terrain on that battlefield that has to be avoided for some reason. Okay? Well, if you don't have the assets to avoid that terrain, if that terrain is a wall like the wall of China, and you don't have any asset to go around or over or through the wall, then it's now it's a checkpoint. There's going to be a gate along that wall, and someone's going to be collecting a toll and a tax. And in our process, that toll looks like your social agency being p whittled away at each one of those checkpoints. They don't. It doesn't cost you anything, because if it did, someone would kill the guy in the toll booth. <laughs> right. No, straight up, they right. would. So they, so they peel your social agency away by saying our system requires a vote. And that's how they turn you into a minority. I mean, Barack Obama did not have a majority vote. He had a majority of the voters, but he only had like a 21 or 23 percent of the American population. So yeah, now Bill, Bill Clinton didn't even have no, no. a majority vote. Neither did exactly. I mean, a majority vote among exactly. voters. Exactly. Trump, by the way. Exactly. So what then everyone hears on TV is that a majority of people voted for Bill Clinton, which is complete bullshit. He was actually the majority in the majority of the population would require 150 million voters to get a majority. When was the last time you saw 150? Uh, that's usually what shows up in total. OK, <laughs> but, you know, uh, I'll just say this just, just for some folks to think about. Donnie, this isn't really for you. Although yeah. you might find this amusing, if you if you really think that you live in a system that really is a uh, is a democracy, uh, Republican direct democracy, or represent whatever you want to call it, which it's it's ostensibly a republic. If you really think you live in that system, just see what happens if 150 million people try to go out and vote. It will shut the whole system down because the system is not built for 150 people to vote. 150 million people to vote. That should tell you all you need to know. Right well, there. <laughs> and, and here's where I'm going to say that everyone has been duped right off the bat into participation. You keep showing up and having your social agency whittled away by this process. And I think the only reason people do it is because it's what we have and it's not what anyone really – no one has ever sat down to write a constitution. And all the people who do, they, they do what they, the, the people in 
1791 did. They put a bunch of value judgments in there. They screw it up, and a whole bunch of people don't want to look at it anymore. And I don't blame them. I've read a bunch of these people. I hereby write, you know, they start off with all the pomp pompous language, right? I bequeath myself the right to talk like a douchebag in the year of our Lord and this date. We're going to do this, <laughs> and everyone's rights will be okay for the rest of the time because paper and words. No, it won't. They're all full of shit, and they don't understand. This is mechanics, and if you put values in there, your cuckoo clock will break every time. It'll break because Republicans and Democrats don't share values. It'll it'll break because Repub or, uh, liberals and conservatives, not necessarily Republican and Democrat. There's Venn diagrams there. Different values. Libertarians and libertarians, because there's some dumb ones out there. Everybody has their own little group. So if you don't build a system that caters to people in their own bailiwick, then your system is garbage. And that's why our system is garbage, because it forces everyone into it, and it doesn't allow everyone to do what they used to do in 1791. It's all a, a system of, of basically social agency toll boots where you lose your agency every time you participate, every step. You lose a little bit more just to hope that you're going to get something. And what do you get? Now, the audience that you're probably going to primarily be reaching through my show, pretty much you're preaching to the choir. So let's get okay. to Donnie's solution. So I'm going to say that a democracy is not your social agency. It's just voting. We're going to keep social agency as literally that. We'll make sure that we describe it as that and we keep it consistent. And that a republic is a forum for debate and presentation, and it's not necessarily a forum for conflict resolution. So republic, so, you're not making decisions. You're, you're not talking about making decisions. Not necessarily. I, I, listen, when you, when you say you have a forum for debate, you don't have to solve anything there because sometimes the well, debate is sort of, Yeah. So, so there's, no, there's no inherent need to have that. And let me analogize this with Rome. In Rome, every landowner had a vote. So they took social agency and they tied it to a vote. They tied the ability to vote to land ownership. So that separated a lot of people out. There's your social agency being whittled. Now, even if you were a landowner, you couldn't necessarily afford to go to Rome. Landowner or not, not everybody was balling. So yeah. the ability to go to Rome financially titrated who could go. Period. Not, not even just financially, but I mean, if right. you if you were in a situation where you had to work your farm estate, and you right. couldn't go off to Rome, you couldn't go off to Rome. You couldn't participate, and you you needed to go and participate. You needed to get in that freaking chair right. or whatever the heck you went in. Right. It, At least you were on good roads. But you had to be able you had to be able to afford the trip. If you think about it, the honorable representative from Georgia during the Constitutional Convention took a month to get there. Right. A month. So that guy was real serious about it, and he could spend and he two had months, the resources to bring two to bear. months, two months on the road, and then what was it? Two months away from home. So it was a four month trip that year, right? And just to give you a perspective, folks, in in uh, colonial times, uh, uh, in order for the average person to sustain themselves, they couldn't just let things sit for more than a couple of days or so. Yep. They had to. They had to work the land. They had to kill the animals. They had to. They had a lot of stuff they had to do to keep things on the flow. So if you could afford to take two months to travel, right. dude, you had a retinue. You a had three resources. percent tax will get your ship looted and your shit thrown in the harbor. You can't steal a lot from people who don't have a lot of prosperity to spare. Right. Yeah. So, so, so to go back to Rome because I don't want to freak anybody out with our system. You go back to Rome now. You got our okay, system. These, okay. These people can sign. vote. Stop. Stop. I these didn't sign. Can, shit. They could vote, but somebody, somebody had to take the votes for them, right? So everybody would pretty much have to agree this is what's going to happen, and dude, man, who can't afford to go is going to take your votes. So it tends to be, it, it tends to be representative. Not because it was chosen that way. It's representative by f because of financial constraints. Well, they actually did have uh, some representative element to it in the sense that... Uh, but that was going to happen. 
they, whether they, 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 they voted in certain I forget what they were called tribes. I don't know if they were called tribes, but 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 certain groups had more voter weight than other groups. So right. like but, uh, but, patrician, but, their vote was like worth 100. So what I'm saying is if you were building the Roman system in that time, at no point would you go and then everyone will come to the Senate and vote because someone would throw shit at you like that's stupid. No one's going to do that, man. <laughs> So, so I'm not saying that they they didn't have these representative mechanics. I'm saying if anyone in that era thought to do it without representation, they would have been laughed out of the room in a very real way. This wasn't just practical, just a, right? Right. So now all of us can e go to Washington every day if we wanted to. We don't have that constraint. So when I think direct, I'm just saying without representation. You can actually do this yourself. It doesn't mean you have the ability, but if you had the social agency to you're represent triggering, yourself. You're triggering a lot of my friends right now, I'm sure. I'm if, sure of it because they had, don't know where you're going. But I'm going to let you get there because I know you're thinking, e-voting, e-voting. No, but but anyway. that's, no, that's the problem. If we were all to represent ourselves in the Senate or the House or whatever, like we wouldn't have bicameral anymore. That super awesome word that we all had to learn would mean nothing because we wouldn't care. It would be the Senate. It would be everyone, 300 million, and we yeah. would all be voting. So now you think about how ridiculous what I'm saying is. Everyone could submit legislation. Everyone can vote, right? Now, in this day and age, what I'm suggesting – is just as asinine as old boy suggesting that we hit, that they all do it back then, right? Well, yeah, a, a direct a direct e vote democracy, right? Wow, you get some pretty crazy what stuff. What happened? What happened to the fucking republic? All of a sudden, as soon as we all became our own senators, the republic vanished. How much of a goddamn republic was it? Was it just representation? Was representation the only mechanic that makes a republic? Is that how all of this works? How did my rights get protected just because I had a representative? Yeah, my understanding does not follow. Of, my does understanding. not follow. Venn diagrams not all all there. My understanding of republic though is 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 not that representative is necessarily uh, uh, a needed aspect. That the the, the fundamental. Uh, element of a republic is that you have checks and balances in some form of rule of law. And my point is and that you if don't I necessarily 10, 000, need or what's that? I, I asked 10,000 people and I'm going to get 10,000 different definitions. I'm very rarely will someone say, what does this piece do in this place? We are, if you're building an organizational model, it doesn't, it's not built on values and hope. It's built on a schematic. This person will perform this function. You, it's like it's like saying that everyone in Microsoft shows up every day and expresses their values, and that's how they produce things at Microsoft. No, it isn't. Each one of those people has a function. They are a cog in a machine that produces something. Yeah, if that's why try, for me the question is irrelevant. Uh, I, I don't try, really care what fits into what because it's built on a premise – that there, it legitimizes force against others who have not done harm to others. Is that a mechanic or a philosophy? Is force a philosophy or does that exist in real life? Force exists in real life, but I, idea, I, uh, ideational power uh, is it, it's a form of power. And so there authoritarianism. Is authoritarianism is a is a form of ideational power right. if people believe in authoritarianism then it gives legitimacy and it makes it much easier well, for others to take force action against others without uh, suffering a, a community society neighbor consequence for those actions that they should authoritarianism is the philosophy that you that your value system understands better than that other person's value system and because authoritarianism authoritarianism is two parts there's the judgment part uh, my understanding is greater than yours but authoritarianism also comes with and i'm supposed to change it so it doesn't mean they have the right to force but it no, does mean it, they it, have it, the desire it, it, it gives it well, there, well, I don't, I don't know if I necessarily want to get into a, 
discussion with you about rights because that could go down another a whole no. other rabbit trail. But what I will say is that we're discussing what, mechanics. Okay. So so what I'm saying is, if someone has the right to be an authoritarian in your life versus the desire, people who knock on your door and try to proselytize to you have a desire to um, have an authoritarian relationship in your life. They want to. They want to tell things to you that you don't know, and they want you to adopt them. It's an authoritarian thing, but they don't force it on you, and you don't have to let them in. But, okay. when, you place, but when you place authoritarianism with a Venn diagram of a mechanic in society where authoritarian ideology has a grip in your social agency, now – your social agency has a value system attached to it. I don't know what it is yet, but it's already authoritarian because it has a mechanic to grab a hold of. I'm I'm not sure that I agree with your definition of authoritarianism. It it you basically described uh and maybe I'm missing a nuance here, but it seems like you've basically described someone who has an opinion that would like to share it with you that think maybe that's a better opinion to have. Now, I don't I don't consider that authoritarianism. If that's the case, we're all authoritarians, dude. No, no, every it's single both. one of us. Remember, I said it was two things. It's it's not just I have a better idea. It's and and I have I'm going to exercise my understanding over you in some way. I am going knocking, to but yeah, but knocking on your door and saying, "Hey, I got an idea." That's not taking authority over you. They're at saying, all. Well, "No, no, no." Listen, it's just a if you're if you think about an information transaction, they're saying, "I have information you should value, and you should give me your time to give it to you." That's what they're saying. And when you say no, what you're saying is I don't value what you're trying to sell. Okay. Which now, well, I, well let, let's, let's, st let's focus in on that word should. Right. When, when you sure. say should, I can, I, I believe, for instance, I, I believe, you know what? I can't really fully say this, but you know what? I'll just, most people would say this. I'll, I'll when say, I, when I believe, I believe that you should not stab someone who is not, uh, preventing uh, 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 a harm to you. And you're like, yeah, I like stabbing people. And I think that you should, am I being authoritarian over you when I tell you you should not do that? Yes, but you're saying that you, there's a lot of people who think authoritarianism is inherently bad. All I'm saying is that authoritarianism I says, that I know better than you. I, I uh, think you're redefining the word and you're you're, no, you're act, I, I, again, I, it's two parts, is... man. It's two parts. And if you skip the second part, then you're right. It doesn't matter. It's not just I know better than you. It's I should do something about it. If you don't have that second part, then it's not authoritarianism well, anymore. What, what do you mean? But, but, but that should part. I can. I, can, I, it's, I, it's I, I believe, I believe oh. for instance, the people around me that think that it's cool to go out and try to lobby for government for people with guns to be to, to show up at my door and try to take my guns for me. I believe they should knock that crap off. And okay. you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna take they, action to try and to they, and they think someone should take your guns. So in so, both cases, So I'm being an authoritarian. Not, no, you're saying no you're not. You're not saying that they should Oh, okay. Okay, I, I see what you're saying. I'm saying they should. I'm totally okay. thinking you're they saying, should. Okay. And I'm saying if yeah. you don't, I'm going to do something about now, it. If does, does, does your I authoritarian think. does your authoritarian value of don't do this to me, does it have a mechanic to force them to stop? Well, no, and neither does the person that shows up and knocks on your door and asks to share the... Holy no, that's literally no that monster. that's actually that's actually a mechanic where they show up and they do it. So that's not authoritarianism. That what separates <laughs> what separates the mechanic of writing stuff on Facebook, knowing that people are going to see it from Listen, knocking on their door. If you you have to stick with the same analogy, a mechanic is where the, those people who think you're going, you know, they're voting. If let's just say. Um, California is probably the state. If someone's going to lose their guns, it'd be California, right? If a cop comes to your door in California, all the people who voted have a mechanic to get into your life. It's the people 
who showed up at your door. That is a mechanism. It's real. It's three dimensional. Authoritarianism is not real life. It's it's a it's a word. It's the thing that we describe a philosophy. Some philosophies are authoritarian. Some are not. If they are prescriptive, they are de facto authoritarian because they say you should. It doesn't mean that they're wrong. You should brush your teeth. It's it's authoritarian. Is it wrong? The, the question where the authoritarianism yes, breaks down, yeah. good, does good it luck. have a mechanic? Good, good luck. if you're going We're all to try authoritarians to... to a certain way because we say you should. It's a value that you prescribe. If, right. If you're going to try to use the word authoritarian in the way that you're describing, good luck communicating with the world because the common – no, good luck, of the word good luck communicating with the anarchist who thinks that authoritarianism always comes in the it's form not of the just anarchist. And it does. It's... And it does. It's, I don't worry. I really don't worry about it. Most of the people who I talk to about authoritarianism don't understand it anyway. So I, I don't, I, I don't really I worry about it. I think that you're defining I, – I, I don't know. I think you have a creative definition of the word authoritarian, but – uh, you know, I I, I'm it, not I'm not married to the word authoritarian. If it changes meaning, that's cool for me. Or if it has a history oh, that points oh, to the meaning you're talking to, that's cool with me. But yeah, this is my it, point. It, this is my effect, point. Effectively I, communicating is a good thing. I am describing mechanics. I'm not describing opinions, and I'm not trying to redefine anything. But if something is poorly defined, like authoritarianism, it has to be. Put into a box and that and authoritarianism doesn't necessarily mean that I have the ability to do anything about it, but it does mean I am prescribing something. That's that's the only way, because if I'm going to make a difference between direct and democracy and constitutional and republic, I also have to be able to make intelligent distinctions between an authoritarian philosophy and a libertarian philosophy. Authoritarian philosophies, by their nature, are all prescriptive. They have to be. They have to be prescriptive. Otherwise, they're not describing any authority to you. They're just so libertarian. My, my, my find your own. Find your own guide. Is a libertarian. A libertarian um, method is find your own guide. An authoritarian method is this should be your guide. Right. Yeah, but. The libertarian you have to method. Of, those terms, and I really yeah, don't care yeah. about all the anarchists who think it comes with a boot. I don't care. Yeah, but the libertarian, the the find your own guide, is is a prescriptive uh, uh, path to. No, liberty. it's not. No, it's not. It's a descriptive path of what you would have to do if no one was around telling you that. You would have to find your own way if no one was helping. Authoritarian ideologies start with someone helping, pointing you in the right direction. That's that's what I'm saying. The mechanics are functionally different. Now, I described I, I, a negative, but it wasn't me. Um, literally, the libertarian methodology is you standing in the Hobbesian state of nature, naked, no food. Figure it out yourself. Yeah, Be I, thy own guide. I, I, I kind of see the differences more as uh... – Emergent versus uh, engineered, and uh, the libertarian path ostensibly is 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 right, but you have naked, basic principles, and and things emerge and they disappear and they emerge and they disappear. Things rise and fall. Uh, associations are made, then they're unmade. Uh, and, contracts and are made, that, and they're unmade. And none of that helps. None of that helps me define a mechanic that I could then install one piece at a time. And say, I put this piece in and it didn't break anybody's rights. Like like you would a clock. I put this piece in, it didn't break anybody's rights. I put this piece in, it didn't break anybody's If I don't break down all of those Venn diagrams into their own you know, individual bailiwick. This is an interesting. Uh, it's a lack of definition. This is an interesting direction that this conversation has taken. Because Every, I think this is my main issue that I have with your idea. And there's so many things that I love about your idea, but you want to cook into the system a whole – you you basically want to engineer it in advance rather than – Of course you would engineer it in yes, advance. Yes, you this, you is the, have to know. this is the difference. I want to see not, principles if it's, not engineered, if it's not engineered in advance, you might as well vote on it because then you're going to get sold a bill of goods and a bunch of values. 
Let's I say, will absolutely uh, engineer this up front in advance. Right, that's, that's what you did. That's the part what, I disagree with. And tell you what you're getting up front. Because if you disagree with the first part and you didn't get the second, you missed the whole thing. And good you luck. Have to, your good car, luck defining what it is remember, that people remember, are going to get. In remember, the your, car, your car was defined and engineered up front before you bought it. And you knew what you were getting up front. I didn't sell you on the idea of the car, not showing you what it looked like, and not assembled. I sold you a functioning car. So when I sit here and say, I built this, it's it's, it's better than that one because it's not designed to run on values. You're comparing a car, which is a a limited function in my life and that doesn't totally entangle me with a broad system of governance. Until the very instant it ends you. Until that very instant where all of your rights go right out the window because the car ended your car. Well, the car, the car will never end my life. It's an inanimate object. It can never end my life. An action ended my life, and it happened to be connected to the car. And, and, and the picture of the coroner's report with what that steering wheel is going to do all up in Again, here, it's going to take a whole the, different picture. The car is not acting on anything. The car is an inanimate object. What, okay. the, the steering wheel was the result of an action, whether it was my action, uh, action of another, and, uh, a force of nature, whatever it was. It's, it's, it's not the car so, itself. So, regardless, so, but, regardless. But still, if you think, I still love your idea, and you think, I hope that you, you actually think, try it. If you think that every single Even part of a system here. that you're going to get should not be defined up front, I don't think it can be. I think I think you're dealing with a, a semantic no. Uh, now you're talking about scope. that you're not no, willing to face. No, you are talking about scope. How far does the system go? Should a system go as far as Washington goes? No, it shouldn't. If it goes that far, then you have defined so many things for other people. Then the cuckoo clock has values in it, and it's broken again. You're- so again. I, well, all, and is, that's what happens this, to all systems, by the way. That's why no, I don't think no, it does. will ever reign No, supreme it forever. absolutely does not no, happen does not. to all systems. It happens to systems that were put together by people who did not know what the hell they were doing or had a motive that was going to benefit them. Every, that's how uh, almost, I mean, every system – well, let, let's – what systems – are we talking about systems of governance? Because that's what I'm talking about. It doesn't I'm talking matter. about systems of governance. I know no. of no system of governance that has existed like, since then, forever. Then you're not under, then that you're is unchanged the, then and that corruption did not get into the system. And, you and, uh, are mistaking the, the, the word system, okay? okay? A system is a design. The Constitution is a system. Yes, yes. I agree is with it, that statement. Yes. All systems a system have is a design. All systems have attack surfaces. Period. Not a, not an opinion. All systems have attack surfaces. You mean right? vulnerabilities? What do you mean by attack yes, surfaces? Yes. Yeah, yes. A, vul- a vulnerability is an attack surface. A system constructed with lots of attack surfaces is shit. I don't think that you can create a system without attack surfaces. Uh, or a system with the fewest amount of attack surfaces sure. possible sure. is sure. best. But if it if it has so some, stop. then it's stop. still Listen, stop. We're if in it exists for right long now. enough, the Listen, corruption is going to get in. <laughs> we are in complete agreement right now. You have not defined what is corruption. And we have not defined the scope. Let me def- okay, and that's a good. You, that's actually you're, you're right way about ahead. That. You're you're ahead in the constitutional model claiming corruption, and we haven't we haven't figured out our entire scope yet. So I'm just saying you're assembling this idea so fast that you're missing nine exits on the way there. And like, wait a minute, go- we got to go back. I'm going to define to corruption stuff. right now. Corruption is the ability any effect for in the individuals any, to use any your effect. system. No. No, to, you're wrong. It's any effect in the system you didn't want there, period. No. If I'm you gonna, assemble. Okay, I, you I assemble, can tell you my definition of corruption, and then you can tell me how I don't mean what I say. Uh, your, what I'm saying is in a system, a corruption is anything you don't want there, period. Yes. Yeah, well, no. Okay. No, it's not anything. For yes, me, it's I'm anything gonna, you I will don't define want corruption. There. Listen, man. Define listen. Corruption. Anything and anything you don't want there are two different things. <laughs> Just let me let me define corruption and then you tell me. 
Okay, so corruption for me is the ability of uh, or, or the inability of the system to block individual agency from using the system to take coercive action against others who have not uh, directly threatened or harm others. I am absolutely certain that if you were to build a system and that was your definition of corruption, that I would have corruption in your life all day legally and there's nothing you could do about it. Yeah, I agree. Nothing. I agree with nothing you. I totally so, agree with so, you. So your definition of corruption has attack surfaces for corruption. No, no, I, I'm not yes, trying to does. build a system. I'm just defining corruption. I don't want to build I'm a saying system. You're de- no, no, I don't want to build any your, system. You just built a system, Paul, a simple system. You built a definition for corruption, and it had so many attack surfaces no, for no. corruption I'm, that it was ironic. I'm identifying the vulnerability of all systems. All systems I'm identifying the vulnerabilities in your definition of corruption. I don't get so, that. Be, because, exactly. You have not de- – I define corruption as anything you don't want in your system, and you said, I want to redefine it. I'm building a machine, and you're saying, but it should be something else. No, it shouldn't. No, it I'm not should. saying it should be. It well, should no, I'm saying, it, I'm saying it shouldn't be. I'm it saying, should. I'm saying there should be – there should be the, the, these, these basic uh, – well, actually, I mean, I, I believe in power more than anything. I believe in the oh, reality of power more than anything. If a, system, if a system is built and corruption arises in it, you built a shitty system. Oh, because it's it has, always going to happen. It, your, if I, it's Every always going to happen, Paul. Even in it's your It's always going to happen. Is this the kind of argumentation you would tolerate in one of your posts? It's always going to happen, and that's the argument? Come now. I, I won't say that I could say that is absolutely certain that it's always going to happen, but yeah, but you I are. feel pretty good saying I, there's a pretty good chance it's always going to happen because okay, of, the, so of, again, of human nature. Again, you're saying that a system is built and no matter what happens, based on my understanding gonna, of human nature, it's going to do things you don't want it to do. Is it the system doing it or is it crime being committed? What's the difference? It's the inability of systems to fundamentally check the very nature of of human. The system will never. Pre- the system will never prevent murder. Does the system adequately define murder and prevent it to the extent it can, and deal with it when it happens? If those answers are yes, then you're done. Does You've it define murder. murder at more or less a, a useful level? Even though defining murder is going to get into some gray areas, but yeah, it can do that. Yeah, uh, and, and I could understand, but at the end of the day, there isn't a gray area to murder. There is a gray, there is a definition of there murder. There is a gray area to... between murder, self-defense. Yeah, there's no, there, there isn't. What there is, is poor articulation of each one of those concepts. That's what there is. Self-defense is easily defined. Murder is easily defined. Manslaughter in relation to those two things. Let me change it this way. Let me change it to – I'll concede that point. I think you're right. Uh, The the, uh, the discerning what was a murder and what was self-defense, that's the tricky part because you don't have all the facts. I got it. Here's where we're missing. Listen. When we're coming down to discuss a definition, it, it's very important to understand that if a definition has a Venn diagram in it and it's not supposed to. Remember, I said authoritarianism before. I had two parts. If you don't put them both together, you don't have authoritarianism. It, it's key ID features. It's its nature, right? If, if your definition contains the nature of, of your thing properly – Like if we were to talk about a cow and define that which is a cow, that's fine. If we start talking about cow having the genetic anomaly where cow has two heads and now all cows have two heads, do we? What are we doing? Right? We're we're misdefining cow. We're redefining cow. Right? But cow doesn't come with extra pieces. It's not cow plus. Right? (laughs) So you have to take all of the pieces. Take in the full right. Right. Yep. Hold on. Piece. Hold on. Hold your thought for a second, because I'm going to stop the. I'm not stopping the show, but I'm going to stop my recording because I'm going to bust these recordings up into two. Because I have a feeling that, cool. yeah, we're going to go significantly over probably awesome. here. Okay. All right, and we're back. I. If you're watching on YouTube, this is the second part of the show. All right, go ahead. 
So if you think about it, what we're trying to do with a system is we're trying to build it like Legos. We don't take any piece that's bigger than we need and add it at any one time. If we start, bun it's called bundling, right? Everybody loves fire. Everybody loves EMS. Very few people like cops anymore. But all of these systems are bundled to you as 911. First Wait. class service, first class Where, service, ninth class service, right? Where are you getting that, that very few people like cops? Uh, I, I don't agree with that at all. I mean, I, I think they're, it's they're not as popular, like but I've met quite a few uh, waving that little uh, thin blue line thingy. <laughs> I, I <laughs> quite would say a few. 20 years ago, most of the people I knew were very pro cop. Most of the people I know now are not, and it wasn't my fault. So I, I, <laughs> it wasn't my fault. That that's is, it. That's, that's it. That's it. It wasn't my fault. So what I'm saying is, that, but those, if you think about it, 911 gets bundled to you as right. cops and fire and EMS. If you separated each one of those and had to pay for them individually, how quickly would the cops go out of business? Yeah. Now, cool. now you're starting to get to the part of your thing that I like. I know where you're going with hey, this, but Paul, I won't. I won't and, lead here. But this is the no. But this is where we're getting our friction point. The, the definitions of the things that you that we're using, if they are bundled in the same way that the cops are coming with the fire and the EMS, then our definition is going to be screwed. We have to break those definitions down into their smallest components. Smallest, because if there's a Venn diagram and we don't need both pieces and we put it in there, we screwed up our cuckoo clock. Remember, no values, just mechanics. No values. Values will screw the whole thing up. Let, let's, let's. I I want you to start to unfold your mechanics. Okay, so back to Rome. Every it was just impractical for everybody to go to Rome. So we end up with a system of representation. Well, now we don't need it. But why is the Republic, if expressed now, where we just got rid of all of our representatives and did it ourselves? How do we end up with a direct democracy? What happened in the Constitution? That got translated from what we're supposed to be getting as a direct republic, or I'm sorry, a constitutional republic. But if we were to take place of our senators, it would instantly become a direct democracy. So all I'm saying is that the republic doesn't have two things inherent to it. One is democracy. If all republics require a form of democracy to function, then all republics are just a form of democracy. It's an inherent component. It's a key ID feature. Then a republic is just an offshoot of democracy. And I don't think that's the case. I, I think a constitutional democracy is what we have. It functioned as a republic way back when, but the times have changed and the rules have changed functionally. Yeah, and, so and, we, certainly, we and certainly the uh, 17th Amendment doesn't <clears throat> help that case whatsoever. Honestly, none of that. I would just say that all of that is second and third order effects of the democracy taking place because if if you think about this, if everyone in the republic didn't have to vote, that meant that they had the right to abstain. And I will submit to you that the best bill of rights you can ever have has one right, the right to abstain. As long as you weren't a catalyst, you didn't start some shit, you don't have to even be involved. And if it somehow did harm to you, now you have legal standing to sue. That's how the legal system should be. It shouldn't place your social agency upon you, tell you you have to vote and place all this upon you. We're taking your money and then you get this back. My idea is, no, you won't take the money. We will all represent ourselves. We won't vote. There won't be all this – well, there's a de facto committee system, and that is you take your tax dollars or contributions basically because people who can't afford to be taxed shouldn't, and people who don't contribute are screwed. Anybody who doesn't know that, in the same way that the, that the big finance guy really understood he had to take care of those votes when he took them to Rome, the, the people who have a lot – now, in our system – legally disintermediates responsibility from large amounts of wealth. Legally does it. The LLC allows you to lose your business, but not your house. So there is business behavior that is legally disintermediated that breeds poor behavior. And then everyone says, 
oh, the, it's the system. You're right. It's the system. It has legally taken the responsibilities that go with those rights because someone else has the right to make these laws for you, right? You don't have the right to make laws. They do. You And, and the real problem, and I'm just basically saying out loud, 535 people make shit laws. 300 million people make great laws. The difference is... Okay, I know where you're going, but I'm I'm just listen, betting a lot it, of people are their heads just exploded but, when you said that. Right. The functional way you do this is build a bear. You don't overcomplicate the laws with eighty thousand pages of law. You start with the first like eight or nine. Don't kill, don't rape, no assault, basic fundamental property rights. That is what keeps civil society together. All the communists and socialist heads just exploded. But basically, South Africa is a slow motion disaster that everybody's going to get to watch in what um, destroying fundamental property rights looks like. It's what civil society is based off of, like it or not. It's property rights. Murray Rothbard was pretty much right about that. Civilization comes from property rights. And in every case, the violent the violent reappropriation of property always ends that empire. Always. Always. Venezuela is doing it faster. It took Rome a long time because it took everything very long time to go away. It takes an authoritarian system a long time to dissolve. Now, the information flying so fast and people able to get ahead of it? Nope. Business can act as fast as the law allows. The law is kind of a question mark. Businessmen wait for laws to come out and then they act. So they're... When they would have acted if they were free to act when they saw the dollar being devalued isn't necessarily advantageous to them legally. They might want to keep their money in the dollar in the stock market because the law made, even though the dollar is being devalued where my money is, it works out for it. So I don't move it, right? So if you know how to balance where the money is, where the power is, and as long as neither are in your hands, it's all good. And I'm just saying we move money and power disintermediated back into the hands of everyone. Everybody has a little. They have a ton for themselves. They have very little over other people. And it's done build a bear. Everybody gets a bear. No murder, no rape, no you know property rights, basic fundamentals. You want EPA laws? You kick in to the Sierra Club. And instead of them spending a bunch of money on lobbying. And this is the important part of what you're talking they about. Buy money. And I, I want to I want to flesh this out for folks so you get this. Okay. okay. Uh, and this is like there there's actually other people they're talking about using blockchains for democracy, the blockchain democracy. And okay. uh, they're they're talking about using blockchains for uh voting that has integrity that you know you can't you know that it's a uh, fraud free and uh, but right. what you're talking about you're not talking about i'm going to vote with other people's money you can only vote with your own money well the thing about having the the, the uh, while i do not agree to having your social agency tied to property right property remember if you, it's the venn diagrams voting and social agency are not always the same Property rights and voting are not always the same, but if you tie them all together, everybody freaks out and says, well, I have to be a landowner to vote. I have to have property. Well, you don't. We, right. We Every, don't. Everybody has some resources. But, but, but so, so here's what happened. They took the land ownership away, but they still said social agency and vote. And what I'm saying is if you take those two pieces apart, voting is actually a really shitty method of conflict resolution. Every, there's no voting at the restaurant. There's a menu. Why doesn't everybody get a menu for a lot of this stuff that there should be a menu for? There shouldn't be a murder menu. Nobody agrees on a murder menu. But EPA, whether or not you pay for environmental protection and what does environmental protection consist of? A lot of people don't want to pay for government waste and environmental protection. I cut a check for the Sierra Club not to spend for lobbying, but if they were just purchasing up hectares of raw land with that money, having a patch of land so big that you could only contaminate the fridge if you the fringe if you tried, right? right? Talk about conservation done in mass like that. They would be able to plant their own trees, they would be able to harvest over the course of hundreds of years, right? Real property rights. But of course, all within that 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 builder bear that you talk about. 
but but that's property rights, right? That's property rights. Right. If you're going to have an organization, what does it look like? A smart contract. It doesn't necessarily belong to a person, but that smart contract is 100% uh, engineered up front. You get to see what you're getting up front, and then you decide whether or not you're going to participate. You know what you're getting into. If you don't like it, you don't put your money in that bucket. Maybe somebody else is going to run an EPA just like the Sierra Club, but they're going to do it different. So instead of getting one EPA, you get competition, and then you get to go put your money in that bucket instead of the Sierra Club. No big deal. Department of Defense is a little complicated, and people think it can't work the same way. And I'm going to say I think there's a lot of waste in the Department of Defense paying for weapons that are obsolete and maintaining weapons that are obsolete. Yeah. And maintaining, and, and maintaining contracts. them so that the 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 owners and managers of certain businesses continue to make profits. It's not about well, defense. Well, here's the thing about so there's profits and then there's if you're going to mandate. I'm, that I'm not of, against profits, but I am against profits that are done at the. If you know, you're going to mandate that Lockheed Martin make you weapons, certain types of weapons, right? You cannot have an unfunded mandate. You could do an unfunded mandate in a legal process. You can't do an unfunded mandate in a production process because you won't be able to pay for it. So you have to make sure that the weapons manufacturers of this country, let me tell you, those guys could flip around and retool and do something tomorrow. They can make high-tech anything tomorrow. They're making high-tech weapons. So if you mandate that they make these things, it has to be just as profitable for them to do that as it would be for them to make drones. Like drone copters for people. Why aren't they making um, – ever see those quadcopter drones with a with – a, it looks like a bike with a guy on it? Yes, yes. I saw some dude making a real one. Okay. Why can't the weapons manufacturers retool to make those? It's, it, 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 these things are not that big of a problem. But when you start mandating, oh, yeah, well, we have a defense industry and it will spend it. We, we need these things. So now we need an industry that will make them when people aren't deciding, like, do we need air power? Absolutely. Do we need ground power? Absolutely. Do we need armor? Uh, I would make an argument that I don't think armor is a function. Of, like we're into the defense rabbit hole here. My point is yeah. everybody seems to think that there is not a market solution and when I say market solution, all I'm saying is competition, non-monopolized competition. Your government is monopoly. It needs competition. No one needs a murder competition. No one needs a rape competition, but we need environmental. We need regulatory competition. We need fiscal competition, monetary, co everything the government is doing, we need competition in, except the fundamental laws that some people call them common law. I like to call it brand law. Brand law was the Irish law system that uh, English common law usurped. Brand law was better. So it's literally brand law. No murder, no rape, uh, assault. This is your property builder bear. Basic property rights. And then, uh, well, no, they, all they had was build a bear. All, or all they had was a bear. They didn't have an EPA. They didn't have all that shit. So no, I'm saying you're talking right now about your build a bear. Right. Right. But if you can, um, in, in economics, there's a concept called, um, what was it? Um, division of labor. Right. Early so, on, but di how, right. Division of labor. Civilization by, emerged. Division by, of labor. By, by having divisions of labor that specialize, they are more productive in that specialty. And what I'm saying is that we should apply the concept of the division of labor to politics. You shouldn't have to pay for defense and EPA and all of the shit the government does. You pay for your specialties, the things that you understand. Donnie's a defense guy. Donnie's never letting defense of the North American continent slip. Not because I really worry about it, but because it's too easy to fuck up. So, so you're going to kick in your billions to a shore? I would have to talk with Jim Mathis and Eric Prince and a whole bunch of people who actually know how to do this, not just on the, on the macro scale, but also in a market and understand how to restructure a defense. Hey, listen, one of the problems the Defense Department has is in World War I, units went together from the same geography, and they would leave the war together. Got brothers, cousins, friends, people who grew up together, they would go to war as a unit. The yeah, military they'd also die together. That's not cool. 
I understand it's not cool, but you get a lot better um, protection from the guy to your left and right when they actually care about you. My point is that wasn't why they were disintermediated. Everybody got separated because they would revolt. They would leave in mass. And I'm saying that the best way to have a military is when units have the right to turn around and leave in mass. Who's going to turn around and leave when there's landing craft on the Jersey Shore? Nobody. Nobody's turning around from that one when everybody's looking at the ass end of an AC-130 and a ride to Iraq. Maybe a bunch of them go, nope, yeah. I'm pretty sure there's no freedom over there for me to find. And they'd be right. So so I don't think the defense structure should be anything like the Department of Defense. But it do, but the Department of Defense, is so, it's like, I don't want to say necessary evil. It's if there's no defense here. The I'm going to say it's evil. I'm going to go ahead and say that. Well, what? Defense is not evil. Defense is not evil. No, no. The Department of Defense is evil. I'm not saying defense is evil. The Department of Offense is accurate. Yeah, yeah. That that is what it is, really. Yes. Right. Right. I mean, so it used to be not... called the you know the 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 War Department. And they're like, hey, hang right. on, I, let's change it to defense. Yeah. So this is kind of where I I to my understanding, I know this stuff. I don't need three by five cards. I only put stuff on the board just to maybe help. I don't know. So you tell me at what point here would you say I want to do? Because so so here's how this functions. Let's just say somebody cuts me a check for $10 million tomorrow and I can run an ad campaign and I can get the staff and I can put all this shit together. What does What do you need from your end to understand what the hell is Donnie proposing? And how does it go from where we're at today to where we end up at the end? Like, I don't know where you walk me through your understanding and then just stop me when you hit a pothole in the road and I'll fill it in. I'm going to get a, a drink right here. Go ahead. Here's the, here's the key part. The, the, the key hang up is it, it starts with your Build-A-Bear. Yes. You have a Build-A-Bear that you fancy as going to keep everybody in their right lanes am, am i is that is that a a good description of what your build a bear is it's going to keep people within certain boundaries is is that an accurate okay. description yes let me let me make it a little more pointed think about it at, do you know the concept of silos yes okay so if an information gets too si or if an organization gets too siloed in its information towards the top you get lack of communication. So one silo is duplicating work or working against another silo, right? Yeah, and you also get groupthink and you get uh, right. yeah, other stuff, yes. Sometimes groupthink works. Sometimes it doesn't. Not when you're in a silo when you got nobody from the outside saying, hey, that sucks. But, <laughs> it, but here's the beauty of that. Now, I, another concept is called surfactant. You know what surfactant is? No. It doesn't allow you to get a grip. So you put something, um, the stuff that you put on your windows that makes the rain roll off, that's a surfactant. It doesn't give the rain a grip. So if you can mix the concept of legal silos with surfactant, the Build-A-Bear does not allow me to grab onto any of your bear. Why doesn't it? What prevents because, it? Because. Words don't prevent anything. Oh, okay. So There'll be something the, more to it. So. The system is not assembled where you are paying for a mechanic like like the DEA to come to your house and stop you from smoking weed. The system only only says that you agree to you're a, it's a passive contract, right? There's nothing up front. It's passive. The first part, the, the first part of the bear is passive. You you, agree you voluntarily are contributing to something you want to happen. In other words, it's free or essentially free. Like if for some reason there's a startup cost for the system, like a dollar, then it's you You sign on the contract. I agree to not murder, not rape, all of those things. That's it. You have not agreed to do anything other than keep your hands to yourself in a legal structure. Now you've placed yourself inside a legal silo that says, I am only allowed to do things for me. My social agency is 100% in my hands, but it's only 100% for me. Now, get, let me give you an example. Now you're going to start writing all your own laws, all of them, because we've already agreed to the baseline. 
all of the laws that you write now only apply to you. If you want that law to apply with other people, you go join that group. But that group doesn't say you're part of us, you're paying the tax. Okay? To give you an example, the most extreme example I know of, you can, the, in Braveheart, there's the right of prima nocta. The English the, lord the, could come down and sleep with the peasant which, wives. Which may very well have largely been a myth, but still, let's let's go on with it. No, I like the example. Even if oh, it, it's still it, a good better, example, even though it's largely a myth that has some truth to it. Even better if ahead. it's a myth. So you can have the right of prima nocta in your legal system, but your legal system only applies to you, so go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, because if I show up... Uh... There are no yeah, peasants. On it. There are no peasants in your system. They couldn't have gotten married. The only person to fuck in your legal system is you. When you put it in there, you are basically saying, "I get to screw whoever gets married in this relationship, which is me." And the only way the other person is going to let you is if you get married anyway. Like they're going to let you screw them anyway. There's, what, what there's just no me way. From, what prevents me from going outside that build a bear that that silo and 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 taking and prima, uh, prima nocta or whatever? So okay, that's called rape. Think about that. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, I'm not saying I'm so now, advocating for doing right, this. I'm just, uh, right. I'm, I'm just walking so, down a scenario. What, so here's what, what I'm saying. What's the when next action? When you are outside of this very basic legal system, you are a criminal. We hear about criminals on television all the time, and then you find out what they did. And you're like, that wasn't crime. And then you find out that why most of the people are in federal prison, nonviolent drug offenses. And you're like, why are those people there? Imagine if all of the people 50 to 60 percent of the people are there for that reason. Listen, imagine this. Imagine if all of the people who thought the DEA was a good idea were the only people paying for it. Right. So when the DEA goes and violates someone, not only are you suing the DEA, but it's a class action against all the people who've been paying for it. Right. So if these people think that they're going to pay a bunch of money, they're going to interject armed troops into other people's lives. All they're going to do is open their property up to claims in a legal system that says you've decided to pay for people to do violence. They've done violence, and you are also accountable for their actions because you helped pay for it. It's not just the cops who are going to be liable for their actions because they weren't immune from any legal repercussions. It's all the people who are funding them as well. And this is how society can literally arbitrage people right out of civil society. They don't – now, granted, you do you, – whatever the DEA did up front, the system doesn't stop people from spending a bunch of money to throw armed troops into your life. What happened to the people at Waco? What was going on at Waco was not wholesome, but the laws of Texas were being followed. It was the, – the laws of Texas allow a 14-year-old to marry and allows – 14-year-old sex with consent of parents. So what was happening up there was not wholesome. However, I don't know the legal. details of Waco. So I do. I'll, it I'll was legal in Texas. It. it was legal in Texas, but then they were just looking for reasons. So they used the ATF as a reason to go in there. And I understand it was shady. They should have been down here changing the Texas laws on 14-year-olds to fix the problem if they were going to fix it legally. They wanted to fix it with armed personnel. All I'm saying is all of those people should have been held criminally and civilly liable for their actions. And everyone who paid their salaries for the equipment. All Imagine if you – in this, remember when we were talking about the EPA and you're like, that sounds like a good idea, right? What? No, no what, uh, when I, I, when I don't I said, know what you're – I never said no, the EPA right, just, was a good idea. All right, you were, sh- you were shaking your head. When I was talking about the EPA and we were talking about – um, putting the private land on the blockchain, you give your money to them, they purchase oh, the land. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, that's not the EPA okay. to me. Okay, okay. okay now, I don't advocate imagine, for the EPA in any way. Sure. Now imagine, with your consent in the contract, the EPA hires a bunch of mercenaries and starts violently enforcing certain kinds of radical EPA law on people, right? Well, that's messed up. With your consent, you should be held liable for that organization as well. With if the organization took the money and did that, it's fraud, right? So we have humans accountable for fraud and crime. We don't have fraud attack surfaces where these people have been legally no longer made liable for their actions. And now they get to execute and collect pay and collect pension and never suffer criminal process. 
allow me to take a short go ahead. I, I'm I'm gonna say so so what I'm seeing here is uh what we have right now is when government does something I'm gonna say evil. I'm just just for the fun of it. I understand that. No, just hear me out. One sec, just to define government, it's not a thing. It's just a bunch of people who we could this is, throw. This okay. is this is okay. Just hear me out because that's okay. where I'm going with this. Okay, it's exactly okay. where I'm going with this. Okay, when government does something evil, it's government. It's not Bob. It's not the corporation run by Sally, Jim, and Susan, supported by Bob, Ruth, and Meg. It's right. government. Your system puts names and faces to all of the actions. So what you're doing is you're creating a more direct accountability. And you hinted at it with when you're talking about the uh, the military, where, where 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 people they went in together, they knew each other. That accountability and also that strength in right. being able to act together with right. people that you knew had your back. So that works right. it works that way as well. I'm not saying names and faces. I'm saying names, faces, addresses, and oh, yes. insurance yeah, all, policy. All of it. You know and, everything and, because you have and, smart contracts, so you know and, where everybody is. And a collective insurance policy against liability. Okay? This organization is put together correctly so that if it screws up, it has a safety net. It shouldn't be screwing up. If there's a screw up, it's either... We could look, have an internal investigation because we shouldn't be – the public shouldn't have to figure out what's wrong by paying some other public organization to go figure out what the chicanery is. They do an internal investigation on their own dime. They figure out if it was accident or if it was fraud. If it was fraud, you prosecute. If it was accident, you make the party liable at least put some of their skin in the game to make sure that the mistake doesn't reemerge or you fire – or a combination, right? Instead of having these unaccountable civil servants, you can put all of these things together up front. To give you the worst example I can, the DEA, uh, all the records have come out. They never interdicted double digits of drugs headed into the country. I think the best year they got was 9%. But what did they do for 30 years? They took pay. They took pension. They took people who did nothing and they put them in jail and then they walked around to every barbecue in the country telling their friends and family that they weren't anything other than a bunch of fucking scum. But that's what DEA and ATF people are. They are fucking scum and you believe that they are effective, taking your money, doing good work and not anything other than a criminal racket legally removed from their actions. Because that's what they are. Because unless an ATF agent was your neighbor, you don't know who they are. And I got news for you. You know, it's, if an ATF agent is your neighbor, you still don't know who they are. Because well, who they are at work is the guy who will put you in jail for I, some. I, I, I just meant you, you could actually put a name and face to them. So, like for instance, I just thought about this. You know, they have this habit where they refer to the United States policy. This. And the White House does this. And, and that really irks me. I can't stand it. I would what? really like – I want to know the faces, the names, the people because it's Why? not the White House. Why it's do you think you're hidden? individuals that have decided on taking an action. Who are those and, individuals? When you say the White House, no. Say, okay, it happened to be – maybe it was Trump and Pompeo and three other people that you've never heard of. Who are those people? Those are the ones paid. that made this particular decision. And you're going to pay for it whether you like it or not. Right. So what I'm saying is in a very real and unsarcastic way, I built this system. It isn't broken. I don't care who thinks it is. It's not values. It's this place, this thing done in this way. If you don't like it, don't put your money in this bucket. Go find another bucket. Make your own bucket. Make your own solution. If you like this bucket, put your money in it. Figure it out yourselves. I just want to say. Okay, what you're describing here, uh, you're talking about an emergent system that has yes. real uh, build a bear boundaries. Is, is 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 the way I'll describe it. So it, you, listen, you have you are end up you will end up with what I've described. You're going to end up with associations and institutions that rise and fall as they are useful or not useful. 
here's what I guarantee you're not going to have. You're not going to have legal fictions that have rights that the humans don't. I guarantee it because I didn't put any in there. I'm certain. So there won't be a United States federal government. Now there the question be, is, how do you sell your message? That's, well, that was your original point. I'll be straight up with you, brother. I haven't met anybody who actually takes the time to understand what I'm talking about who, who, who objects to any of it. This shit sells itself. The real problem is I can't walk into a mayor's office and say, you, you I know have how to have dis- somebody willing to talk to you. And that's I, know, the hard part. I know how to make your job obsolete, Mayor Umpty Scrunch. Would you like to buy? Nope. Nope. I'll be shown the door. So the real problem that I have is it's not a matter of these systems don't exist. It's not a matter of they don't work. It's a matter of we have a highly propagandized population of people who think that the rule of law is absolute and don't understand how any of it works. They don't think understand that what a ghost it is, right? They, they think the Constitution is the best expression possible of the rule of law, and most of them don't want to hear any talk, let alone philosophy is great, mechanics are crap. They don't want to hear anything, and that's kind of a problem. But if I can say constitutional mechanic, uh, philosophy is great, individual rights are great, Let's make a system that actually protects them instead of pays the lip service and provides as many attack services as humanly possible that a lawyer could wrap scrounge up. It, hey, William Shakespeare is my uh, my muse on this. Kill all the lawyers. The lawyers are the problem. They redefine a word that you didn't get it get a chance to even talk about, and then a law is written that you couldn't have objected to functionally. All of that social agency to make law yourself is gone. And and let me tell you, it's when you see things like this on a battlefield, it looks like a choke point. OK, 300 Spartans killed Christ knows how many Persians because they had them trapped in a 40 yard span. Yeah. OK, they just kept killing them over and over and over. They were just standing on bodies and killing more. OK, and that's how a choke point works. Don't think you're going to beat it. You need a goat path or you need to remove those mountains. And a lot of people don't think about a battlefield and removing a mountain, but a legal battlefield, you could just pound the fist on the battlefield and change the terrain to flat if you want. It's all law. It's not an actual battlefield. So you take all the tactics that I know from 19 years in two different branches of the military with five different jobs. I know tactics and strategy probably better than any human you've ever met. And I will tell you, this is a a legal strategy. It doesn't have weak points other than crime and funding. Funding was the weak point of the um, Constitution, so they put taxes in. They made up the right to tax, they put it in, and now they funded it. Well, if we don't do that, we have two things. One, we're not going to have that problem. There are so many people now and there's such an excess of prosperity that a couple of bucks in the bucket a year and not getting taxed on your income, it's nothing. It's nothing. I would say that the what you get out of it, here's how I sell it to the Christians. There will be no more laws against abortion, Christians. However, you will not have your money channeled into Planned Parenthood ever. Ever. So... My uh, like I come from Baptist. My mom is very strict Christian, very pro-life for all of the right reasons, but then wants laws to prevent abortion. And that comes with a maintenance cost. You have to proactively police that when in reality you don't. Yeah. You don't. Yeah, I'm I'm a Christian. I'm very pro-life. I don't believe I, I mean, I want to stop babies from being killed. I and agree. I don't believe laws against I, I just don't I how do you if police murder, how do the, how do you police women and figure out like you know if they're pregnant when they're pregnant did they have a miscarriage and now there's it, if the murder it law seems pretty daunting if the murder law doesn't prevent murder in public how is an abortion law going to prevent abortion, abortion in secret that's, the whole that's I, right yeah the whole idea that that you can legislate this idea to begin with it's dumb it's never going to work agree. Yeah, so that's... so rather than than continually climb the idiot mountain of legislation, yeah, we if... say you will never be in charge you of – You know how you, wait, never, you, know how you prevent abortion in your system, how you prevent abortion? 
you, in you, your city. you fund uh, uh, taking care of women in need. You exactly. Fund, you know they exactly. You, know, you, you put a fund together for take care of people. Who can't, you put a fund together for people who can't have children. Okay, and they can't really afford an adoption process. And you marry them up with people who are willing to go through the pregnancy and willing to have the baby. You just marry them up. You're not going to get 100% of the abortions. That's never the way will. it is. No, you, you never, never will. will. But but you'll the, get way more. I believe you'll get may, way more in this path than you will trying to make it illegal. Way you're, more. You're going you're gonna to get a huge cost trying to make it illegal. Then you're going to get an argument, which you may or may not win. And then if you lose it, like Roe v. Wade has shown, then you're going to get to fund um, Planned Parenthood. And that's because all of those laws are written – like somebody will be screaming saying, I'm saying that's wrong and Planned Parenthood doesn't get paid for abortions. So let's be clear. They get paid for women's health nonsense. When you go there for an abortion, you end up doing like 12 of these little bullshit services and they give you the abortion for free. But they end up char- – like the piss test that you could go down to – down to CVS for and get for like eight bucks, they'll charge $85 for the piss test. And that subsidizes basically the cost of the, all of the, all of the cost of the abortion is disintermediated through every bullshit process that Planned Parenthood will just call an administrative process and they'll charge you for it. So that's how, that's the chicanery. All it, it is. Regardless of how they do it or the degree to it. It's a Lamborghini are, you fact. have You have the power in your system to not fund it. I don't exactly. – I mean, some people might fund it. You can't stop them. They might fund here's, it. Here's the thing you have to say. Like some people will say, I don't think it's enough to just say I'm getting the money back and I'm not funding it. But let me be clear. If you understand economics, when you subsidize something, you get more of it. That's how that works. So the subsidy that abortions are getting is actually – it's not just enabling more abortions. It's enabling an abortion paradigm a little bit more. So I'm saying you're going to get a little. It's an easier choice to make when it's subsidized. I don't. It's an easier I don't... choice to make. It's less costly for the individual to choose. Right. It, well, it, not just that. It's it's less costly. Individuals who would have had to pay for the abortion themselves and would have, or individuals who would have chosen something else, won't do. Well, those people will still. Right. Th- they won't do abortions. I've got lost there, but. You get the idea. When you take all of – when you no longer incentivize a thing and you just leave it on its own, that's where all of the real problems – like you and I getting involved with anyone's abortion, never mind the fact that we're men. If we were two women trying to get involved with the abortion of a third woman, even that's stupid. So none of this really makes sense. You leave it to the individual. You leave the costs to them. You leave the decisions to them. And you basically end up with a better system than trying to control it in any way, shape, or form. And you don't end up subsidizing it. So that's where I say this kind of shit sells itself. It's not necessarily a great solution. But when my solution is sometimes you're left over with reality. And if you're trying but, to solve but, reality, so, you're in what for you, stupid. So what you end up with is, uh, yeah, people are like, oh, well, that's great. That's wonderful. Um, how do we get there? Okay, so let's just say we made this a, a personal initiative. So I get $10 million, I set up this system. I make all of the identification possible to move over into the new system. All the systems get set up so that you have a new ID in the new system. What happens? So this ID, um, to give you – let's just say we're every, let's just say everybody's kind of on board, but we don't know how. So I, I don't want to deal right. with every adversarial step. Well, you know, you're not going to have, have everybody on board, but you you have a sizable enough people that are on board for you to do this. Right. Because so, you're not going to get 300 million to be people today, to be on board with this right can now. You, can you see that? No. Oh, never mind. Okay, so we have today, and then we have the day that, that, that this system comes into place. Now, just imagine a line across it in some way. The old system titrating, the new system coming into being. Individuals decide when they leave the old system, okay? Now, they have to do all the stuff of the old system except cancel your citizenship. That's stupid. If you're moving away, that's one thing maybe, I guess. 
but you don't have to cancel your citizenship officially. What you do have to do is get yourself out of the tax system. You have to no longer be a W-2 employee or you accept that you're, you're going to have taxes taken out of your check, but your, but your land. This is, this is really the baseline control of, of all of the federal system. It's the land deeds. So we would set up a system where all of the uh, U.S. land and territories would set up a map. And the first thing that goes on the map is all the federal territory, all the federal property, because that's going to have to get sold off to pay the bills. So the federal land register goes on there. Never mind that. That's for fixing the old system and getting that problem solved. It's not for us. So let's say your house, you, if you own your house, whatever, you come up on the map as my house is in the new system. My land deed was put in the new system, has to be done with ArcGIS. It has to be done certified. All those documents have to be put in correctly, right? You're loading your life into a new system. This is not I'm trying to hide from the old one. This is my name's Donnie. I live at this address. This piece of property as professionally um, and, uh, um, surveyed by these people, by these coordinates put into this system on this date. I still have city water at my house. I still have to deal with the old system, right? I don't get to just magically disappear and pretend that life fucking stopped. But I get to come out of as many systems as I can. You're still going to pay property tax. I'm st No, no, no. You see, I took my land back. So now nobody has the, the right to tax, but I'm using city water. They don't need the right to tax. I'm using city water. They can shut off my water. I'm using electricity. I'm using sir. I'm using roads. I have to. I have to have some kind of way to contribute to that. I don't get to free ride. So you have to start looking at well, what this looks like. But having an intelligent road contribution, having the systems that you use and paid for, easy. It's easy. But having all of the legal agency peeled back off of you, believe it or not, that's the hard part. Getting yourself reestablished. So the best way to do it is to do the way, the way they did it with the Constitution. I'm starting over. I start over with this system because I understand it. It I does understand. this. You, Go ahead. You have to have the – I'm, I'm what trying if it to takes process this. I have my property in your system now. Now uh, uh, it's sure. now it's part of your system. It's not part of the old system. Right. I'm in a position where I don't have I I'm self sustaining. Now okay. I'm, I have a long road, but at some point I do have to access the roads because they're freaking everywhere. But think, still, think about I, it like Easy Pass. Think I'm about it like disentangling. Easy pass. I'm dis yes, but I live in an area where they still have property tax, and they don't care about whether you use the sewage. Or whether you send your kids to school, they are their their basic their assessment is and again, okay, your property you means this much. Listen, Therefore, listen, uh, what prevents we, them from we, trying to collect that again, tax from me? Again, nothing. However, what I'm talking about is one. Think about it this way. We again, we can't do every air of a serial point. So the agreement up front is the everybody wants to change systems, but only the people who functionally understand how should. Because if you don't, if they really don't know how to do this on their own, they shouldn't try. They'll screw it up. It'll it'll mess up all kinds of systems. It'll cause bankruptcies. So when you make it a personal initiative and you make it available, the people who leave are the ones who functionally know how. And if it takes fifty years to let that old system die or get to the point where it financially just can't. So you're not talking that. about going down some ridiculous sovereign citizen route. You recognize oh. the reality of power. And so well, you're 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 working what I'm saying to me, is that everybody, everybody to me, you're working on creating a system that as more and more folks start to participate in the system, more products and services will not become more available. More. Not more and more. This is a competitive system, but let's be really clear. If you have a problem where you trying to let's just say, like I said, in mass we kind of like the system, but there's pockets of people who don't. If you're living in one of those pockets of people who are willing to use violence to prevent you from leaving their political system, you have a way bigger problem. You, you don't have to totally leave their political system. You can – just like you said, you're not going to, no, it's to not. challenge – No, it's not. You, what you're describing is a mechanical either you can or you can't leave. 
If no, you're I'm not. Owner, I'm actually not at all. I'm, there's if if they own your property and claim the right to tax, then you then none of the, what I'm describing actually happened. You didn't leave the system, and you do have the violent government problem I'm talking about. Yeah, absolutely. That that's that's right. But but you're yeah. you're you're on your way out, I guess you could I, say. You can still participate in aspects of this system as right. things become available. As let's, as, if as, have, as a power emerges that allows you hey, to let's resist, separate you're, if you will. You're saying that a power has to emerge to let you do this, which is absolutely wrong. No. The power to quash you from doing it is the problem. No, That's no, the they're, they're one and the same. The power no, to quash you or the power to no, resist. They're not. One sure. is a positive one and one is a zero. And you're comparing the No, one, no. Well, okay. Nothing uh, stopping you is a zero. One is something stopping you. So okay. if there's a so, system, so let me like, uh, how about how about I put it to you? See, I don't think it's going to be like uh, uh, one day like the whole thing has disappeared. No, no, they're going to make efforts to to try to quash people who who may be leaving the system. But what's going to happen is they're getting less and less resources, so they can so they can mount up less and less people. And correct. so at some point, they're going to mount up so little people compared to what you have. That it'll no longer be viable. No, they won't. They will do it all up front because they recognize that, or they won't. So you're I don't I don't get that. I don't get that point. You're saying they're gonna wait till they're in a state of No, no, no. I'm to, saying to that you're going it. to continue to see. They're they'll they'll be successful and hey, then now, they'll be not successful. And now we're right back where we started. Either you have a violent government problem or you don't. If you have a violent government problem, you have a whole other problem. We're talking about reorganization, not de facto military rule by your your local cops, okay? They're different problems. We're already talking about people who understand the systems are going to change. I past each other here. I don't, I, I don't think you're getting what I'm saying. You're talking about I don't a think conflict I'm getting what point. you're saying. You're, you're talking about a conflict point that will absolutely kill all things. I understand that. What I'm saying is... If you have a violent government problem, you don't have a reorganization problem. I'm not you trying to reorganize fix... the government. Yes, you are. No. Well, okay, no. listen. I'm trying to see the Turf. power as 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 more and more people stop feeding the government that this system that that we're in right now, okay, listen. then they have less resources to bring to bear to stop Governance. the emergence of something different. That, governance that, is governance is organization by violence. Organization doesn't have an inherent violent component. So what I'm saying is, violence, yes, it's it's possible. Is, it's, is violence defense? Violence has nothing to do with whether offense or defense. Okay, so I, I just want to make defense. sure you're defining violence as just being. Uh, I really, you're talking about physical force, the use of physical right. force, whether it's right. to protect Remember or I, to. I, Remember, I break all the mechanics down to their smallest pieces. If you have a violent government problem, violence, government, I'll, I'll just put them together. If you, if the cops in your area are willing to kick in your door to prevent you from leaving, then you don't have a reorganizational issue. You have a violent government. You have a governance problem. Who's talking about reorganizing? I am. I'm saying if you're not allowed to take your land. Are you talking about deep, reorganizing or are you talking about building something totally different? They're the same thing in this case. We have an organization now called the Constitution. This would be a new organization, but it wouldn't well, be government. the governed. Constitution is the system. System and organization. Same okay. thing in this case. Now, to me, organization is the system being acted out, but go ahead. Uh, I'm All I'm saying is... A governance model runs on coercion, force, however you're going to say it. Microsoft does it. It's an organization. And I'm saying the governance model will now just be an organization like Microsoft. No one association, has, if you will. No one has right to aggressively uh, enforce law so unless you have given them agency to do so. With the exceptions of murder, rape, property crime, etc., right? So, so you still at the baseline, but, but, but I, I want to walk this back a little because I think we're getting off point. Hmm. And 
And what I'm describe, what I'm trying to understand is the process. I said, how do we get here? And then I introduced the property tax issue, which is a pretty fundamental problem in the scenario that you gave If you me. have the right now, to tax, then you are the de facto owner of that property. Okay. Period. I am the de facto. Okay. That's right. Yes. I, and, I, and I say that all the time. There is no property ownership. Government owns everything. Unless you live in an area where you don't have property tax, but wherever property I'm, tax I'm, exists. I'm trying now, to describe the system workings, and you're saying that when we get to property taxes, that the taxes don't go away and that the new system is not allowed to reemerge at this point. If it's no, not I'm not saying that. No, I'm not saying that. Okay. What I'm okay. saying is what happens? What do you mean? What I, I Be more specific. What happens at what point? When, I've, when I've you put my property into your system. Okay. So now, now it's on. Okay. Blockchain deeding system is we trade property according to these rules. And the rules are very property-based. They're not state rules, state regulations. Sure, I state get that. I get okay. that. But the state outside. Now, my local my local government. Uh, okay. The local but, government. Yes. Just, Paul, use the terms and quit being pedantic about, about being mis misconstrued. We're having a functional conversation. I, I Roll, with my government, Roll with it. Roll with it. No, uh, no, I, I'm I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm not going to say my government, uh, the the local government. Right. I, I've entered into this contract with this new blockchain organization. OK. For your deed. How does how 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 does that interaction? Is there a, first off, let me just ask this basic question. Is there an interact interaction between the local government and that this organization? Not de facto. Not de facto. OK, I right. mean, you mean de facto and not uh, as in this organization doesn't automatically scoop up whatever your local cops are. It doesn't do that. No, 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 no. The, the issue that we're getting to is they I've I've entered into this contract with this blockchain and now the property is on this blockchain property. Right. Does the they local how does the local government view this property? OK, right now, all of the properties are basically controlled in their county register. OK, so okay. the county is the controller of all the deeds. If you don't pay your taxes, they redeed your property. They sell it to someone else and they kick you off. The other right. person assumes, OK, in a blockchain system, no one has right to force you off your land. You can be held civilly liable, but that's, again, your murder, your rape, right? What can override your property deed in this system? Civil judgments that have been gone through the prop, right? So you can have your property redeeded, but it's only after you all the processes you've agreed to. It's not some taxation not paid process. It's you were tried and convicted for a double homicide and your property now belongs to the victim's family. You're talking about two systems that as of right, you know, if. if... Nope. Because all I do is put the put my deed from the old system into the new one, and they no longer assume title, and they no longer have right to tax. How do if they I, do? They recognize this. Again, we're working where everybody says we're we're titrating out of a system. I can okay, find now, now. Okay, so I can now find we're getting more through, battle points than you're finding. I can find way more. No, 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 way no, more. no, no, no. Um, I'm I'm starting to get to the heart of what you're 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 describing here, and okay. and you've you've you uh, this conversation could have this part of the conversation could have been a lot quicker. The answer, as I understand it, is in order for this to happen, you have to be in a community of people that agree to this, and then no. you don't have a local government. No, because listen, okay, what I'm so I don't understand. Okay, I'm still it's not getting better... how it is. Then it's if that's not system, the answer. It's a federal system, but your your deeds are controlled by your county. So and I'm saying that the land deeds on the country will no longer be controlled by county. They will no longer be controlled by state. The land deed will will become part of that federal layer where the federal land deeds were put. Your property is no longer taxable. It's not taxable by state. It's no longer taxable no, no, by, a, no. by a still legal not, fiction. You're still not getting my point. You're still not getting it. It I'm seems not sure like now you're going is. to the end where what will, what will this look like when the whole system's replaced? I, the, what, I don't I'm, know what you're – listen, I'm not I, sure okay, what you're trying it's, to get at. It's, it's 2018, 
and I have I I've decided right now, right here and now, there's a there's enough people that that want to do this. They don't all live near me. Some do, m- m- most of them don't. And uh, we we form this blockchain and we put our properties right. into this blockchain. Right. What happens? What does the local government recognize the legality? of this action and oh, and remove themselves. There is literally no way I could divine all of the localities, whether or not they'll recognize it. There's literally no way. We're describing how a system functions, not the value judgment that every possible locality no, can cast upon I'm, it. The, the conversation that we're, uh, I'm trying to have with you is, You're saying how that do we get to your place? Take your land. How do we get I to understand. your place? What? What, what we're trying to describe, well, I'm trying to understand is how does this, how, how do we, how do we get from the idea to it actually happening? And then you described the property and how you put it into this blockchain. And then I'm yes, trying to understand. That's how it actually happens. That's how it actually happens. No, I understand Where that. You- but does that happen? Can that happen while I'm living in this locality? One of the processes that you would have to do is take your prop. Once you get all of that stuff put into the deed system, you have to go to the local people and take your deed out of the register. Now, if every locality plans on pushing back, you're going to get pushback. But here's the thing. when I'm not, the f- I'm not trying to quash this. I'm trying to understand the process. Through, and I understand process, even what I'm process, talking about. It's, it's not going to be like listen, when, the results when, aren't always going to be the same. When you describe the process as mechanically stopped by another group of people. I'm not. I'm trying to understand yeah. how it emerges. I'm not okay. saying it'll be stopped or not right. stopped. Okay. So so you place your deed into the – basically you go to your county system and you give them, this is my deed. Hey, this is my land that I had here. It's now on the other system. That system doesn't trade and isn't subject to the same legal rules as – as the other, as the system in the D in the courthouse, that's it. They still have the majority of property deeds. Only the people who leave, like I said, it could take fifty years. I don't know. The so, point is that people leave eventually, but eventually the old system collapses one way or the other. So I'm basically putting a system in place that lets everybody who's ready to go go. It, as the system runs out of funding and gas in the tank, and when it collapses, then everybody else has a new system to fall back on. But that system is ending, and there's no amount of legislation or argument that will keep it alive. So I really don't care about the people who like it's going to last forever. I don't even talk to those people; they're stupid. I don't waste no, I, my time. I, I don't I, waste I'm with my you on time. That. I don't. I don't uh... That system is collapsing on live television right now. So anybody who talks <laughs> about it that it's going to be here in 20 years, I don't take them seriously, and I don't waste my time. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I, I don't know whether it's five years, ten years, twenty years, yeah. whatever it is, but. The clock is ticking on that one. I, right. I have little doubt about that. So I'm in the solutions department, and I really don't – like people have the ideological, but the system can be safe. No. See you later, guy. Yeah, See you I, later, guy. You don't I, know what you're talking about on a level that I don't waste my minutes with you no more. I have, I have no desire Done. to save this system. Now, Yes. so so I'm, the, the next question I'm going to ask you is – So now, is, let's, let's, but let's, the, let's the issue – The issue of the property – and the property tax is that a is that is it is it possible for that not to be resolved and still have aspects of your system emerging for someone yes but it's still a, it's a real problem because no one has a place to retreat to okay someone still has legal agency to go everywhere they are the specter of the federal government and if I they have to, that right if like the feds are not supposed to come to your house onto your property without a warrant. Okay, so what they did was they made the process of getting a warrant so easy and streamlined right. that now a no-knock warrant is almost – And it was the- recently upheld, so yeah. Well, the reason that they do that is because they live in a country filled with gun owners. So that every time they go in, those idiots really are risking their lives. What they don't – like there's AR-500 in my walls. So when the Travis County Sheriff's Department comes to my little puzzle box, we're going to play peekaboo at 2,800 feet per second, and I'm going to slaughter them like the pigs they are. So I, I don't talk. care. <laughs> I don't. There's people who think that they can do stuff to me, and then there's I retreat to my puzzle box and the rules change. So I don't go around murdering 
and I don't expect anyone to have to dig me out of my puzzle box for wrongdoing. Oh, okay. there's another word. Anytime you hear the cops investigating themselves and they refer to it as wrongdoing, remember, they committed crime. They committed an offense by statute. They described it as wrongdoing so that you knew specifically that they just got their buddy off and they didn't use the words that they would have legally used to mean it that way because they let him off, not because he wasn't guilty. Wrongdoing is, uh, hey, everybody, we screwed up, but nobody's going to suffer any consequences. That's right. (laughs) Wrongdoing means wrongdoing means you people are fucking stupid and we just let some crime go away underneath your noses. That's what it means. I, I'm very harsh on the protectors, the, the protector. I'm a sheepdog. That's right. Sheepdog only do shearing. I'm a shepherd, okay? I'm keeping the sheep safe. I'm not shearing the sheep. The sheepdog, I don't know, like the whole concept. It's a little too obedient, and it doesn't seem to really care much about the sheep. I actually want to see all of the sheep get where they're at. Now, granted, the shepherd. Yeah, yeah, that's great because the 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 sheepdog follows the orders of the shepherd. Maybe this. Maybe (laughs) I'm just another fucking sheep in the crowd and I'm tired of the shepherd and the fucking sheep. No, I I get your metaphor. I wasn't looking into it that you were, you know, trying to become the Lord leader of all. I I saw there was a cop in Ohio and there was a guy swinging a knife at him. And he he had a pistol pistol like like his, his body cam was almost looking down the sights at the pistol the whole time. And he gave like 75 yards to a guy swinging a knife. And at a certain point, the guy just snapped out of it and he put the knife down and he laid down on the ground and the guy didn't shoot him. And I'm like, oh, my God, that asshole. There's one good cop and I have to fucking admit it now. God damn it. So but that was it. There's, I know for a fact there's at least one. But the I, I vast very majority rarely do I garbage. say uh, I, I the try to scream are fucking garbage. I try to get. I try to stay away from saying absolutes, although it's hard. But uh, yeah. yeah, remember there's, this. There's Every time you see a cop, oh, the, or is there? The, here's here's your military trivia, right? The five five six, the five point five six NATO platform, the bullet. It's not designed for punching through stuff and ballig- ballistic stability. It's designed to take a small piece of metal, push it over that way real fast, and it, if it hits anything. Then for it to continue on and do as much damage as it can. So if I was to accidentally shoot a 30 caliber round right here, it would go through my neighbor's house and it would eventually come to rest in something. If it hits something really solid, it might ricochet. If a 5.56 round hits your body, it could hit your ankle and come out your neck, okay, and never exit your body. It really could because it's not ballistically designed to – to do a job, it's the jo- well. The job is go over there and mess things up. Yeah, the That's job, job is to mangle. Right. Okay. Then explain to me why any cop in this country was ever walking around in a residential neighborhood with one, protecting anyone but himself. <laughs> That's it. Except, I mean, it's like That's okay. It. I have. I have. I had an AR-15 once, right. and you know. Uh, I have, I'm not I have, grabbing my AR-15 because I got neighbors too close to me. I wouldn't I, do it. I, I have a 45 caliber rifle by my bed because I'm a responsible adult. You and don't want every, over-penetration. And I, and I like to rub it in. Every cock-sucking cop out there carrying a 5.56 platform in public is a piece of dog shit. And they should know it. Yeah, they should know it out loud. Yeah, no, your job isn't to protect over yourself. They're over Your penetrators. job isn't to protect yourself. Your job is to protect others. That no, requires no, you to not have a weapon that will screw everyone up in the process of help. Except his job is to protect himself. He's far more valuable to the state as a oh, revenue oh, agent job. than you are. That's right, and that's what he's there doing, protecting right. his revenue his revenue generation capacity yes, and not exactly. you. Yeah, right. no. exactly. exactly. I'm just saying, though, if anybody out there thinks that they can protect these cops, you got to wait for them with a body camera to back up for 70 yards from a knife wielding crazy guy before you know that guy can be trusted. That's what it is, because the rest of them are running around like Rambo with their five, five, sixes, taking sexy pictures like they actually know what they're doing. Every time I see one, there it is. Another child who doesn't know what he's doing, not protecting anyone. But that's right. what the state of affairs is. Like that, the industry standard is ch- large children and body armor. That's what the industry with, standard with is. Some so exceptions. that's a real sad state with, of affairs. With, with some, and you know, increasingly, there's some exceptions 
they're they're the older cops. Uh, the the generations coming in, they're they're, and and I, I, listen, I don't know how you know about this or what right. you feel about this, but there's a lot of veterans that are coming into the military. That I mean, into the policing because it's you know it's an easy and job they, to get, pays well, and they're bringing that military mentality with them. They're they're that, soldiers. Hey, listen, I think this is an overall macro design. Okay. They send all of the decent, intelligent protectors off to war to let the ignorant, dumbass betas follow orders in home. The legal situation goes sideways. And what comes home? People who want to still protect, just like the, just they get dragged off to war by their hormones and desire to protect. Then they come home still having the hormones, thinking they know how to do it. What do they do? They rambo up into the police force thinking, hey, I'm a protector and I do this. They never question the orders. They've already been trained. And that's how it goes. If you actually got two or three generations of pro genuine protectors, not at the kind of guy who doesn't need to be told not to carry a 556 platform in a residential neighborhood, that guy, the guy who doesn't need to be told, those are few and far between anymore. The, 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 they're just so few. If you remember the old SWAT guys, it was special weapons and tactics. They smelled like pot. They hadn't showered in days. And they would pick you up at a red light because you were a violent felon and there was no way they were going up into your house with your kids and all the crack yeah, and the AK-47. Right. They would snatch your – well, you're fiddling with the radio. They'd snatch your ass out at a red light. Where are those guys now? They're all dressed up in body armor ready to kick in the crackhead's house and flashbang his baby's grenade. Okay? I don't care what this group or of retards – flashbang the baby with a I don't care. I, I don't care what this group of retards thinks they know. They're a bunch of amateur bullshit artists yeah. who are stealing every day. Remember, the DEA has taken pay and pension every day for 40 years. And what did they do? What did they do? They're a bunch of lying scumbags. And until somebody comes out and says that the law enforcement in this country are a bunch of large children who will not do anything other than follow orders and do what they're told, then the problem doesn't get fixed. They've accepted that those protectors are helping. And everything that you can actually see has nothing to do with help. Yeah, the problem, you have a schizophrenic situation in this country where the people who are willing to see the cops for what they are also want the cops to take your guns. What and we the have people is who, who – well, hold on. The people who want to hold on to their guns, they also give total hero worship to the cops – the ones who would take away the guns. What you have is an, a population that is so densely ignorant that the Nuremberg defense is the de facto statement when something goes wrong with a cop. Just, Just doing my orders. job. Yeah. Just doing my job. Just okay. Orders, right. What do you tell a person who's so stupid that the Nuremberg defense is their de facto line of, of thinking? You don't. You turn around, walk I'm away, and hope for a better generation next time. I've actually used the the you know pointed out the Nuremberg defense to to no avail. It sounds <laughs> listen. Some of this is a little pejorative, but honestly, but but I, point, I, I I I do want to get on on back on point because what I'm okay. I'm I'm a uh, I'm I'm I, not really. I mean, I do I I like theory. I get into theory, but but only so far where. I need to – I won't say – yeah, I'll say need subjectively. I need to see how it's concretely possible. And so what? far, I see, I see a problem with – well, not necessarily a problem. It, it could be a lack of understanding on my part. But, but I see a, 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 a barrier between me understanding how your system emerges. And I'm just going to say this, and you can correct me and, okay. and do what you will. But – Based on what I've heard so far, it seems to me that in order for your system to emerge, you 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 need to have a certain amount of people who, for one reason or another, live in areas where it's easy for them to get that whole property tax thing resolved. Now, I'm thinking that if no. you have a num okay, go ahead. Because because that would mean that all of your social agency was tied to land ownership. I'm saying that the reason the system works, the baseline, is because you have a place to go that no one rules but you, and that is your property. Now, if you're renting, you have a contract with somebody who owns, 
and you have a place to retreat to and your social agency isn't really tied to the land. Your, your social agency is still yours. You're a renter. Your rental property is tied to a contract. So to, to make the distinction here, there's no cost to a social agency, but life in itself has a cost. So we cannot legislate the cost of social agency away because your life has a cost. Your life costs are yours, but your social agency is free. So don't confuse which is covering what thing because a lot of people are like, well, if I have social agency, then I have to have property land. No, you don't. You And here's the real thing. If you were to actually go into fuck all Canada and go build yourself a, a log cabin, uh, no one's going to know. People act like you need land ownership to live. No, you need frontier skills to live for free. And nobody has those. They don't take themselves out to where nobody lives and just and just, you know, uh, Ron Swanson the rest of their life out. They just don't. So they want all the creature features of modern society. They don't want any of the responsibility. Okay. Okay. They want all the agency to control okay. it with no contribution. I'm real. I really trying to get to the understanding here that I still don't have. OK. And uh I, and, and, and yes, no, I, I didn't even address the renters, and that's a that's another issue altogether. And and my questions here is is an attempt to visualize this emergence. It's it's not like I think well, okay. I don't think it's possible. So, I want to visualize this emergence. So again, I'm back to the guy. I'm back to me, Paul. I'm I love this idea. I want to participate in it. I am in a jurisdiction. I do everything you say as far as. You know, I put my property into your system. I okay. go down to the local government, and the local government laughs at me. At, does does that okay. then cut if you me find off from it, listen, further pursuit? I'm certain. Oh, so no, no, no I'm, I'm not. No, I'm you, not nope. you can th- sell that land and move other elsewhere where you can. Now, the, now I I hate that answer, and I understand what you're saying. You can stick it out there, and like I said. Here's where it's emergent. It's emergent when you look at a society like America who's kind of fed up with this bullshit. Okay? I yeah, think yeah. change so is that they can imagine Listen, that they can We just had an, but... we just had 8 years of a president running on change that only provided more of the same. I think the people are ready for the change and the system is incapable of it. So I don't think the people is the problem and having to try to explain every jurisdiction or every no, way. No, 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 no. I, I want to stop you. I want to stop you there because right. that's not where I'm going. It, I'm only talking about one particular instance. I'm not talking about this applies to every single circumstance. What okay, happens so, okay. in this particular right. instance you. only? Okay, so just your so we're going to use your just case. Me. And and I'm okay. saying okay, and you say sell okay. your land. I'm like, dude, that's not a po- that's not possible. Okay. I'm upside so, down on my mortgage. Right, so, There's no so way right I'm now, selling my house anytime right, so, soon. So, uh, I agree. So now right now you're sitting in the middle of radio anarchy. You're in East Germany wherever the fuck it is and you're radio anarchy and yeah. I'm over here. Okay. So I don't know what I'm supposed to do to change your reality for you as far as I'm concerned no, and I'm no, going to get cheeky I don't, here. I'm not I'm going to go statist. There is no way I can give you an authoritative answer to certain questions because they are your decision to make. No, no, no. I'm not looking for an authoritative answer. I'm looking at okay. is there – are there levels of participation that people can engage in yes. the system? That's Here's my the big thing. question. Here's the thing. If you live in a place that's taxing you and they refuse to, to get on board with the new programs, you end up paying the old taxes. Okay. Now, can you still pay in the new participate in the new system? Yes, you can pay more into those buckets to have the whatever agency you're looking for in those other systems. You can do that there. It's like somebody who's participating in cryptocurrency this, in, this, in in a jurisdiction that doesn't allow it. They're this still is the doing answer that. I was looking for an hour ago. Right here, this. Oh. So. <laughs> So here's this is what where this has all been about. Okay. So listen, so here's where you're throwing me. I'm describing mechanics. And if you ask me for a value judgment, I'll say, stop, stop, stop. Only mechanics. So when you stated, this is my situation, now it's real easy. I don't have to worry about all of the mechanics. We just work from your point, and I, I miss that. So sorry. Yeah, I'm uh, just talking about a scenario, actually. I think I even said scenario. But, but here's just the thing. this particular I, scenario, not like the global. What I'm anxious – the question – what I'm going for is I'm – I because there's no if, – if I'm understanding you here. correctly, 
I there's there's no like clean clear like everybody's going to enter into the system in this way and it's going to emerge this way for everyone. No, no, there's no. going to be different paths, different experiences. Everybody, listen, that's every, what I'm talking about. Venn diagram. Everybody enters the system the same way. You're saying that everyone had the same ease of entry. No, no. Yeah, okay, yeah, no, no, no. I'm not saying everyone. Right. I'm, I'm saying okay. specifically no. No, everyone does not have the same ease of entry. Correct. But the, what I, what I, I was fishing for. About that. Oh, absolutely. I get it. What The question that I was looking to get answered, which I believe you just did, is if if my ease of entry is difficult, I still have levels of participation that I can engage in yeah. And, yeah, and, and move myself further and further away from what More I'm old- in now. Moreover, remember, I was talking. There's a kind of, let me explain it. It's called jurisdictional arbitrage. ICO, certain the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission, another group of garbage humans who are absolutely not doing any good for the people. They are chasing innovators and ICOs that would be starting up here. They're chasing them overseas because they're saying you're a security. If you don't function in this way, we won't allow you to operate here. We will come and do violence at your place of business. So what these what these people do is they look them right in the face and say, fuck you. They pick up their toys and they do move. And guess what happens? Nothing. The SEC doesn't get any money. They don't get any control over the CEO. And yes, those people just committed arbitrage. They took jurisdiction that was causing a problem and they got rid of it. And they go to a different jurisdiction. So here's how you get to do this, even if you're in radio anarchy stuck in this jurisdiction, you can start funding projects from your house in in East America, funding projects that are eating away at all of the barriers that East America has from West America. You can still fund it from there and no one can stop you. Yeah, this 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 is is exactly what I was looking for. Because but here's the thing. A lot of people are like, well, that's an added expense. I understand. But the real expense that you have is the taxation, it's not the contribution to the new system. So again, you have a a violent government's problem, you don't have an organizational issue. Right, and in this instance, what you're describing, I think, uh, is uh, what you're really funding is, especially especially initially, if you're in, you know, East America, so to speak, you're actually funding your escape. (laughs) Yes. getaway. (laughs) Yeah, well, you're... And and that's worth it. You're funding... Listen, you're funding a political tunnel out of Europe, it's, right. but it's a political tunnel that you're digging, but it's yes. the same mechanic. Yes. And the reason you're digging the tunnel isn't because Donnie's system is shit. The reason you're digging a tunnel is because the system you have right now is shit. See, Let me see I think example. this part that you're talking about is a very important lead in for right. when you're talking to folks about this emergence, about how, how do we get to there? I, hey, I just got to make sure we're talking about the right thing at the right time. To give you an example, there's a crypto cur- – well, I don't say it's a cryptocurrency. It's a crypto project, uh, and, uh, uh, an open-sourced, open-ledger project called Civic. And okay, Civic – I've heard about this. I don't know the details, a, but – So let's just say everyone says we all need an identity platform, and we're not too picky. Civic is good. We all use Civic. Okay, now there's another one that's meant to transfer property called Propy. So now let's just say we, t- we, we use Propy as a, a system to exchange the property and we put an ArcGIS layer to, deter- to denote where those properties are in the lines and we put that on Propy. So now we got Civic and Propy already in place, ready to use as new emergent systems, okay? It's not – listen, I think like an insurgent. I was an intelligence analyst in the military. I, I don't buy what I can steal or is already there. I don't build unless I absolutely have to, and I use minimum viable product because I can't afford better. All of this came together in my garage with very little help from anyone else. It's a cuckoo clock. If you think it doesn't work, you're wrong. If you don't like it, it might not be for you, but it works. That's the, that's the part that everybody has to get over, especially the constitutionalist. The Constitution is 2000, circa 2018. It's garbage. It's garbage for us. It's great. 1791 if you're a white male. If you're a, a, a part of the gentry. If you're, or uh, let me rephrase. If you're a white male and a landowner. Land, like the gentry, yeah. Yeah. So, but that's it. So let's have a system. 
performs the same philosophy. It has to have different mechanics. If you don't know how the mechanics work now, you can't change the mechanic to a new functioning one. So the land deeds, it's kind of easy. You move the stuff over to Propy, you give it an arc just layer. I'm not I'm just giving you bare bone solutions. There's no, more and, to it. And I actually there think, it is in ten seconds. Like, Propy arc just done. And I and I actually think that uh you know uh I think that people will be surprised uh especially like you pointed out, like it's just one or two properties in a locality, You're like I don't want to deal with that mess. You're gonna be surprised how many localities are gonna be like, whatever. Right. You're, well, you're gonna be again, surprised. Again, basically, and I not took, all localities, by the way, even here's have the beauty of this. Tax. Here's the beauty of this. I took the land away from both your county and the state and put it on the same register as the federal land register, which basically means that if somebody wants to fuck with the new emerging system, they they should be fucking with the federal government who's now trying to protect that land register. The remaining federal system now – so I'm trying to make it so that the systems argue with each other as to who owns what. And whenever we're going to take something, we let the biggest system in place guard it for us until we can actually take it for ourselves. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. So and- so kind of like that. Like, th- Listen, this is tactic. Put one tactic in. Did it break anything? Okay. It didn't. Now it's part of the strategy. Take the next tactic in. Did it break anything? Shit, get rid of that one. Take the next tactic. Put that one in. It works. Didn't break anything. Move to the next one. So you start with the land deed layer. Now you have a place to retreat to and the laws don't apply everywhere. Then you give everyone their social agency by making them a senator regardless of whether or not they have land. Yeah, I can, I can actually see as this – as as more – if you get more and more participants, I can see a situation where some folks may – May actually uh, sell a service that uh, okay, you're in you're in East uh, East America, so to speak. Uh, guess what? If if the, if if you need a place to retreat, you can come here. Right, right. Yeah. So and, uh, and yeah, let's I, face it, there's going to be some places like I, if I can't get any traction with like I I have to I, if I don't get any traction with this on a national level by the end of this year. I'm going to scale it to Texas and I'm going to make a stink in Texas because there's a bunch of Texas people that are fed up with a bunch of stuff. Like there are people who got the legislature here is actually fed up with the way the legislature is controlled by special interest. So I see a lot of problems emerging and I think I can get some national traction on this because I think a lot of people want change. And I think it's easier to do. This is a bottom up system. It emerges bottom up. But it's easier to fix the system from the top down because that federal layer protects your interests on the way down until they meet in the middle. Fix the system? You're not trying to fix the system. What do you mean by that? Stop. Stop. Jesus fucking Christ. Stop. I can't <laughs> have every single word be another attack surface, okay? Just stick no, with no, the No, 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 no. I think I, I, I think stick with the spirit. No, no. Uh you're not fixing a system though. You're you're creating a new system so well, the other system is actually getting better as the people leave it because it has less options to do things to less people so it's it it let's call it a band-aid fix on the old one until it finally titrates okay, out of so I, I see what you're saying so you're talking but, okay right um like what I said, is the I'm guest name use, ken, ken wants to, to know use, ken huh? ken odinger uh oh, this is uh donnie uh gebert did i say it right that time did, uh, yes, and Donnie is talking about his idea for a direct republic that utilizes the a, a a blockchain technology that enables people to pay for the services that they actually want done, and it's and it and it has a framework around it of what Donnie you know, your 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 build a bear, you know, certain things that everybody agrees to. I will not murder. I will not rape. I will not steal. Uh, or, what, what are what are they all? Um, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know what that means. Uh, uh, okay. Um, anyway, go ahead. So uh, I can't read what you're saying. So, oh, no, no. Oh, uh, oh, he said, uh, uh, just a couple things. It's not, he's coming in in the middle of a conversation. So oh. he says, uh, 
words have meaning. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Dude, it's not always easy. And don't be lazy and don't expect us to acquiesce to it. I don't know what that means. but uh, If you come it, late in the conversation, we've already been over this. Point, yeah, oh, so. yeah. The, the, you're, the, you're, you're, you're like two and a half hours into this conversation, Ken. So some of the stuff that we talked about, we've, we, we've defined Speaking our terms. Which, and Speaking of which, you figure out what's going on with Ken. I need to take 60 seconds. And I'll okay. come right back. All right. Okay, so while he's going for his 60 seconds, for those of you who may have been late to the party, what we're talking about here is a, uh, it's, uh, what, what Donnie is calling a direct republic in which you have uh, individuals who decide what it is that they want to, uh, what it is that they want to fund. And uh, government, if you will, is only what people fund and they're not necessarily funding like one central institution there are multiple entities that emerge that compete for the services that you would like to fund that you would like have done and uh it's 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 it has a a boundary placed on it with what donnie has referred to as his 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 metaphorical build-a-bear so you have this this basic foundation of uh i don't know i can't remember all the things on his list but the, the some of the basics are you, you, you don't i i will not murder i will not steal uh i i will not rape and it's it's designed to create a level of accountability so for instance if you're funding a service that does that 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 by its design is doing bad things to people and the bad things, you know, coerces them, you're violating their their fundamental liberties, whatever, however you want to term it. Uh, not only are the 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 people that that run that organization accountable, that you have accountability, you have liability. So there's no more nameless, faceless, uh, uh, black holes. <laughs> there's names, and you're dealing with smart contracts. So there are more than names. There are names, faces, addresses. You know where everyone is if they're the ones that did something that they weren't supposed to do. And, Ken, you said, uh, any licensing requirements for offering various government monopolized services? Well, uh, in theory, there would, be, there, there would not be government monopolized services. There, and, and I don't... I I don't know. Well, I'll wait for when Donnie gets back. But but I would imagine that uh, some people might not want to buy services from uh, folks that didn't have some sort of licensing accredited from some agency that they recognized, and some people might not care. So I I think there would be a lot of variability with that. I don't I don't I don't see that. Uh, Ken, Ken asks. Ken asks, any licensing requirements for offering various government monopolized services? Oh, shit, no. Licensing yes. licensing goes away. There's there's no authority to license. Now, there's a plus and a minus to that. Licensing usually comes after some kind of certification, okay? Mm -hmm. So if the government gives you a license to do to, as permission, the hell with that. If there is a certification, you might want to make sure that the people who are providing that to you actually know how. Yeah, my so, my my take so was Go the ahead. problem is that the licensure in a lot of cases makes sure that the person is at least certified. Now, here's the real problem with this. The government then says the certification requires a certain thing, right? If it doesn't require an actual education, to give you an example, the federal government accredits college. All of the courses that the kids are getting their degrees in these days are accredited. They have degrees from accredited diversity, uh, uh, diversities, universities. <laughs> I was you know what? That's not far. Yeah, I was, yeah, was real Freudian on that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, right. But but that's what they're getting accredited education. So is it an education because the government said it was accredited? No. They've been licensed. So yeah, and, just because they're licensed to do something doesn't mean that they're competent to do it. Yeah, my 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 take was that there there's, 
I mean, it's it's not a requirement of your system. Sometimes it might emerge. Some people may prefer to to you know if I'm going to have a, a a a heart surgeon operate on my heart, I would like to know that this guy knows what he is doing. So there may be some form of certification process there, but there will be competing certification agencies, and it wouldn't be a requirement because if you wanted to decide to get your you know, operate on by some dude down the street that you don't know what he, you could do that. Right. (laughs) Good luck. Right. Right. (laughs) Make sure you get a contract signed so that when you die, we know who did it and why, and that you were kind of dumb for letting the guy who runs the 7-Eleven operate on you. I'll give you an example of how to really do away with this. There's a place called uh, Surgery Center of Oklahoma, and you can go to their website and they will tell you how much your surgery is going to be. It's a free market um, hospital. But it sounds like you get 14, you know, oh, my surgery is $14,000 and they think it's a lot of money. Like, wait a minute. You go and you fly to Oklahoma for a week and you stay in a five-star hotel for $1,000 a night. That's twenty. That's, that's $7,000. You eat $300 in food a day. That's $9,100. Then you add the surgery on top of it, $14,000, right? Fourteen thousand ninety one hundred. Now you're at twenty three one. When was the last time anybody had a surgery and their insurance company got charged less than twenty three one? Okay, and I said you were staying in the Four Seasons and eating at Bobby Flay's all week. Well, so so what I'm saying is insurance is a scam. If you're not going to yeah. use it properly and when like the way insurance is, is constructed now, you get so many surgeries for it. It would, or I'm sorry, so many services. It would be the equivalent of having gasoline insurance on your car. You should pay for your own prescriptions. You should pay for doctor, doctor checkups. You should have emergency insurance to cover those big catastrophic right. surgeries. Yeah, that's, but that's, the government, but the government has accredited, if you will, if you'll just allow the turn of words, they've accredited all of your insurance plans to make sure that they have the minimum viable stupidity. And that's <laughs> yes. what you're getting. Minimum so viable. You stupidity. have to remember that any time a politician, that. how is it that John McCain is an expert in foreign policy, defense, social security, insurance scams, securities and exchange regular? He's not. He's not. Those people in Washington don't know fuck all about all of those things. They know how to drive the system. That's it. And what I'm saying is if we have a system where those things get driven only when you decide to drive them for you, then you get as much of it as society ends up doing. If you end up with so many environmentalists that it's very difficult to purchase land to go logging on, then again, you have to move to Russia where the bear will let you cut down its trees because you have so many. <laughs> but it, but really, if you're surrounded by private property owners who will not allow the cutting of the trees on their land, then what agency do you have to go cut them down? But if you're an environmentalist in America. All you got to do is call on the EPA or whatever. Or a logging agency. You have it, let's just say you, you're both. If you're the EPA and you want to control that land, you have an ability to lobby the land away from the owners, regardless of how they were using it. And if you're in the logging industry, you have a way to lobby that land away from the owners, regardless of how they were using it. So as long as the government maintains a fundamental property right that we don't have and that we don't even agree to how it should go to, then forget it. This game is over. We are slowly getting to Venezuela instead of quickly getting to Venezuela. Ken Ken says, "Okay, shut up and take my money. Where can I get more info?" <laughs> there, he, see, and this is the problem I have. Nobody, nobody hates this idea. Nobody, because they have their own agency to fuck it up themselves. And you'd be surprised how many people are more than willing to go fuck it up themselves. <laughs> Those are my favorite people. Right. Well, the government is bad, but I would rather take I, I will tell you, I am the king of the retards. I am the I am the king of the retards. If you don't know, I'm certain I have fucked so many things up that there is literally no way that you're going to find any. And no, Down syndrome and retarded are not the same thing. I don't know what retard figured that out. I I'm, have seen so I'm, many mirrors. I I'm have not never going down, down the PC syndrome. path. That's that's. That's whatever. I have never found Down syndrome in a mirror, but for five years of my life, I thought it was a magic retard box. 
So I am absolutely certain that retard right. and, and yeah. Down syndrome have a Venn diagram and that I am a retard, but I don't have Down syndrome. And this system is built for retards. It works. Even you can't screw it up. I can't screw it up. Nobody can screw it up. That's the point. It's soldier proofed. I was a staff sergeant. I have to make sure that I can give this to. <laughs> okay, what? so where can he, you don't you don't have anything up, do you? Right now, is, it's is not a matter of anything. Up? If you think about where Bitcoin was in two thousand and eight, it was a bunch of guys talking about Bitcoin and some guy trying to figure out how to mine it. That's it. Okay, there was no Bitcoin to talk about. We have to discuss what's the difference between a direct republic, a constitutional republic, a direct democracy, and a constitutional democracy. You do with some people. You don't with others. No, no, sir. You and I don't have to have that conversation as a society at large. We oh, have no, I, I, I said only you, you, you don't have to have it with some people. Most right. you do. Most you do. I'll, I'll concede that most you do. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, so honestly, the overall discussion, how is it structured? This is what this is. This is what this seems to be. What the hell are these things and why don't we know? And if we intelligently break these up and we get down to the bottom one where you have the right to abstain and only have to put money in the things that you want to go towards. And everything is basically done. Like if you can imagine all of all that, which is an LLC or a corporation is just a smart contract that doesn't have a legal status the humans have legal status the organization is just the contract that you're signing and getting involved with it's not some separate entity that has agency and can do things that concept literally it's like having a ghost around an llc is a sock puppet and you go rob banks with a sock puppet and then when you get caught you turn states on the sock puppet and send that fucker to jail <laughs> uh I'm, That's I'm, gonna wrap, I'm I'm going to wrap this show up here. I got to I got actually I got work to do tonight still. And uh <laughs> they talking past my bedtime here. So, uh, we're going to have to have you on again uh sometime in the near future. I want to uh, talk to Bodie too cuz he's usually comes with a he's he comes with a whole different thing that you he, different angles with him. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's a different yeah. Angle. yeah. Yeah, Bodie Bodie is going to uh and and yeah, I uh, to to a certain degree, I went after your language. Bodhi goes way. I mean, I, I had thoughts in my head that I didn't share because I'm like, eh, I don't want to really go ahead and go down the dissecting language path entirely. But let me but, help. Let me help. Let me try to help with that. There's a difference between language and mechanics. So again, if we're describing cow, but we're pointing at a cat, then we're then that's the problem. So if you think about how things work as opposed to what they're called, you'll understand where where your energy transition is. Think about uh, your government working like a Rube Goldberg machine, okay? You have an input. It has an output. It shouldn't have an opinion. It shouldn't have a status. It shouldn't have the ability to instigate legal action against you. Right. So it, you, what you need is a Rube Goldberg machine that you put an input in and you get an output and you knew what it was going to – you knew what the output was going to be before you put something into it. It's not a nightmare machine where you put your quarter in and hope it doesn't produce a nightmare for you. That's what we have now. Mechanically, we have a nightmare machine. And I'm just saying we keep the philosophy and we take that same philosophy and we create the mechanics that – Cause that philosophy to emerge every time instead of hoping that through voting and the honesty of our politicians and the wise use and spending of our funds, we'll get it right that we time. get the same result as if we engineered it from ourselves. I am done with hope. I am done with change. Yeah, and I am right. done with pretending. I, here's the part I don't pretend. The politicians in Washington do not know how to fix this problem no matter how many times they tell you that the very next step will be the one that helps. And see, no, they don't. Well, well they, e e even if they were really earnest in trying, which they're not, they're looking after their own self-interest uh, overwhelmingly. Uh, they, they couldn't pot, just like you said with John McCain, he's not an expert in all these fields. What you're talking about is creating a, a system of governance, if you will, in which millions upon millions of people are figuring it out and oh. and and uh yeah they're gonna figure it out because they need stuff to work 
<laughs> is John an, is John McCain an expert in any of them? No, I don't. I don't know that he is. He's an and expert the, at being one of a the politicians. Problems, That's one all. of the problems in the system is that the people who end up in charge do not necessarily have to have an understanding of the job they're about to do. It's not how they're. It's not how they come about. So in my executive, when you start an agency, you contract. You find someone who's already doing it. They already have a competent structure that's functioning, and you're going to hire them to do it. You're going to know that that guy actually knows how to do the task instead of telling you he thinks he knows how to do it. And all he needs is your vote and a bunch of your money, and he's going to go and fuck it up in a way that you couldn't even imagine because you would have never done something so stupid. Stacy, uh, Stacy Schmidt, uh, you, you joined us right as uh, right as we're about ready to shut the show down. But uh, I, I do encourage you to listen to the archive, which is like three hours long. But uh, that's cool. Uh, what we're talking about is uh, we're talking about uh, Don, Donnie Gebert uh, has an idea, and I've talked to you him before about this. I love his idea, and it's the idea of a direct, a dir- almost a democracy, a direct republic run on a blockchain in which you fund what you want to see happen and it's bounded if you will by your build a bear you know things like uh don't murder don't st- I, I i pledge i will not murder i will not steal i will not uh commit rape and i don't know all the I'll other send you, the list. I'll, I'll send you a link to put in the show notes i have a 17 minute video if you go on to robert murphy economist robert murphy's website it's uh consulting by rpm.com he has a blog, and um, I have a 17-minute video on there. If you go to his blog and you type in search, just type in automate, and, and mine will come up right to the top, how to automate Congress with blockchain. I also have a, uh, a YouTube channel, Direct Republic, and there's just a bunch of uh, informational material on there, like a bunch of videos. There's probably 12 hours of videos on there to watch, maybe more, but just something for if you thought something – you should by watching those videos, you should at least understand the mechanics of this is the problem. This is this is how this system is, is sold to you as this is what it does and this is how it works. Then this is how it really functions. This is how effective it is. And this is why, you know, this is how to replace it. You know, the DEA is a really right. easy one to, to pick on because they're they're useless. Yeah. Like, when, when you useless. send me those links, I'll uh, I'll certainly I'll put them in the, I'll put them in the uh I'll add them to the description on this uh, video, but I'll also put them in the links to the what will end up being three videos on YouTube. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. So I want to thank everybody uh, who who joined us here tonight, except especially the folks that uh, uh, took the time to comment. And I I do want to have you back, and uh, I'd like to talk more about how this thing emerges and when we have you on again i'll say hey if you guys want to hear the other part of this like what are we talking about let go watch these videos but i want to talk more about the emergence part i'm very interested in that part and and uh you know moving the ball forward like how how Mm -hmm. do how do we start this i'm interested i know a number of people that are interested i i I would put put this to you that in the same way that ken went from explain your goddamn self to Shut up and take my money in 15 minutes once you understood where all this was going. That's that's where this goes. It's really more an education. People have to understand what the system is, what it's supposed to be doing. That's the hard part because a lot of people think they know what it's supposed to do. They think they're supposed to have agency to control other people. And if you're looking at society in such a way, you're you're I don't think there's any system that will make you happy and the people you're trying to control, you're always expecting an argument there. So <clears throat> just looking at a system from bottom up, I solved the problem to where we would only have, we would only share funds and solutions if we ended up meeting in the same lobby together on purpose. Otherwise, our money never touched and we may have never met. I don't see the point in having a legal system that determines all of the laws between you and I when there's a chance I'm not going to meet almost everyone. I should only have to deal with the instances when I have a legal issue with my neighbor and I don't need the laws of Texas to help. I should have an organizational structure 
But the laws of Texas are nothing but an attack surface to make sure that if me and my neighbor have a problem, that neither one of us get what I want and some third party gets what both of us wanted. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that's another show. That could take <laughs> us down a whole other path. Yes, it will. i got to get going. So I, I thank everybody for joining us here uh, again tonight. And uh, join me tomorrow on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon, for – uh, it'll be between 12 and 12.30 p.m. Uh, for headlines you may have missed where I will feature your daily lulls as well as your dookie of the day. You don't want to miss the dookie of the day. And uh, I'll be on tomorrow night on this channel, which is uh, uh, for, for Newsfire with uh, the one true Niz. I have no idea what we're going to talk about yet, but uh, I'll be back tomorrow night. So. Uh, you have any th last comments that don't take 30 years to make? No, to say, thanks for having me. Okay. Uh, the best place is <clears throat> Direct Republic Facebook page and Direct Republic YouTube channel. There's a lot of it, – it, really the questions are go watch 12 hours of YouTube in your free time and figure out some of these things and and get a little more involved in your understanding of it because once you understand what's broken, then you'll know how to fix it. And then I won't sound like a crazy person telling you that Build-A-Bear is a legal system. So, <laughs> All right. <laughs> and with that, I bid all of you adieu. Have a great uh, rest of your evening. Good night, everybody. Good night. It was good.